Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're resuming our session. Uh, when, when I asked ask Hartmut to uh, show that video seven minutes before the beginning of the meeting, I was just testing his punctuality. Now I see that the host, host country is, uh, representatives are very punctual, and that, that gives us even more confidence that everything will be on time. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, let us resume uh, our uh, uh, conversation. And as I mentioned, the first uh, speaker in this session uh, is representative of the European Union. Please, Christina, you have the floor. Yes, from Christina Monti from the European Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So if my voice allows me, I would like to share a, a, a few observations and maybe um, some practical suggestions for consideration by the MAG and the host country. Um, my remarks are more on the preparatory uh -huh. process. So, um, the building on the overall positive and encouraging assessment of IGF Istanbul, we have recognized uh, that the next IGF will be under even more intense scrutiny because it will be the 10th IGF and the last one under the current UN mandate and because um, it will need to show it is able to meet increased expectations from the global community. And this is prompting the MAG to put even more energy and focus into its activities. I believe it is particularly important to maximize efficiency and synergies during the preparatory process leading up to Brazil, including through intersessional work and the creation of working groups focusing on different areas, as it has been proposed. So I wish to welcome the proposal by the MAG Chair in its summary document to concentrate intersessional activities on themes of a developmental nature, also in connection to the discussion on new sustainable development goals, possibly. And as a practical suggestion, uh, the work of the MAG could focus in a structured way on the very concrete recommendations that are uh, collected in the Chair's uh, summary. For instance, um, this is just an idea, but different working groups could be created in order to explore more in detail and implement the um, described recommendations. And linking up to the important discussions on Internet governance that we reviewed yesterday and that we mentioned again today, and which will influence the work of the MAG, one concrete deliverable for the next IGF could be a message addressed um, to the UN General Assembly on the WISIS Plus 10 high-level meeting of December 2015. So uh, we agree that considering that the IGF will take place only one month before this meeting, this could provide an excellent opportunity to express the views of the multi-stakeholder community on this important process. And final uh, point on IGF outputs, in order to ensure a broader outreach, I think it would be useful that the main, at least the main outcome documents are translated into uh, UN official languages. As we see, even in our preparatory meeting, we are relying on the services of interpreters providing multilingual translation. So we should allow the broader community to have at least a, a similar treatment too. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Christina, for uh, your uh, comments and proposals. Ac actually. I would like to uh, draw your attention to one element that Christina just said, and uh, it is for further reflection, and I would like to uh, gather your reaction. So Christina suggested that maybe uh, outcome, uh, the, what structured outcome, if you wish, from, from the Brazil meeting would be uh, the message uh, to the WSIS plus 10 review conference, and that message would be uh, endorsed by all participants of IGF uh, and would be prepared uh, through intersessional period and, and so on. So please reflect on, on that proposal. Uh, in my immediate reaction, personally, uh, it, it looks appealing, but it may drive us in, in a very uh, sort of existential discussion about Internet governance. Again, n that's my first reaction, just drawing your attention uh, to this proposal. Hartmut, please, you're next on the list. Uh, 
I like a lot of comments that already uh, we received before the lunch, but I see that one concern that was not very strong co uh, commented. We need to avoid competition between workshops and the main session. I think that uh, uh, one or two mentioned this, and I like to, uh, uh, to introduce a complete um, uh, timetable for all the days. Is that ready on the, can we show this on the screen? Yes. Uh, I think we, we, uh, most of us or the newcomers are lost. They don't see the, the, the total agenda. So we put together a proposal. Forget the timing. Let's see only the structure before we go in details. No, no, not this. Yeah, yeah, no. Please continue talking. So the idea is th that we have first workshops and then in the end of each day a main session uh, without any competition between the, the, the two kinds of, when I say workshop, I mean uh, all the parallel, uh, parallel yeah. Uh, we have, let's say, 10 rooms so we can have uh, a lot of parallel sessions in the, mo in the, in the, in the during the the session in the afternoon, and then late uh, the, as the last session on the day, a main session about the teams. My, my proposal is that we uh, don't compete. Uh, I think that in Istanbul, we probably have too many options. And on the end, the main session with uh, high level invited people compete with workshops. And this was probably one of the, 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 the problems that uh, as an old timer uh, uh, participating in most of the IGFs until now, not myself alone, but others also feel. So the idea is, if possible, to avoid this, uh, this superposition of this kind of programs. Okay, thank you. So if I understand correctly, you're suggesting that we have, uh, le let's assume 10, as you, you, you mentioned that there will be 10 uh, rooms, 10 parallel workshops starting uh, in the morning, uh, two times, then in the afternoon, one time, and then we go for pl plenary not competing, which means that instead of, of uh, having 80 workshops per day, sorry, not 80, uh, uh, 40 workshops per day, we would have 30, right? Well, it depends on the time. We can have 60, 90, and 120 minutes workshops. Depend how we use the no, time. If, if we take if we take average, so please the proposal uh, coming from host is to have instead of having a plenary in parallel with the all workshops, as okay. as we uh, usually have, uh, to consider having uh, uh, parallel workshops, and at the end of each day to have one concluding plenary. Now you have it on the screen. Yes. Now you. Uh, so, uh, and that would be uh, without uh, having parallel workshops at that time. Yeah, that's for, for that's an option for consideration and, and uh, reflection. I have uh, next, have you finished? Uh, about the time schedule, yes. I, I Please go ahead then. Uh, I like to underline that the working time is exactly the same uh, as the normal. Uh, I, I received some, some comments that we are spending too much time on the beach. I, I said it's flexible time, uh, it's working time, and the working time after lunch is exactly the same or more than in the last years. So the argument that we are spending time for uh, pleasure is not a correct uh, argument. And uh, very important, we try to go near to Europe and Asia that the not on-site participants have better time to follow all the negotiations uh, during the, 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 the MAC uh, uh, the forum. I think if we expect to have 30, 40, 50, 60 hubs as we have during the Net Mundial, we need to respect also the time zone difference. And I am in favor that we use, uh, let's say, uh, three or four hours to go in favor of the uh, on-site, uh, not on-site, uh, online participants. That is a very strong argument that must be considered. Thank you. So thank you, Hartmut. Uh, again, please do not pay attention to the uh, 
uh, left column which says time uh, timetable so that is not decided we haven't discussed it uh, and no decision has been taken so the basically idea is to have uh, parallel workshops in the morning then one session of parallel workshops in the afternoon and then the the main session without uh, having parallel in parallel any other workshops so that's that's one option which is proposed let me uh, turn to the next one. Uh, Sita, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll be quick. Uh, I would like to echo what Fatima and Inzumi have said. Uh, in Bali, there is a specific booth, especially for Indonesian, who is very new to IGF, to inform them about IGF. So if we want to reach the unusual suspect, informing those newcomers with better information to take meaningful part, meaningful part of discussion of the forum, it will be good to provide that kind of booth in the IGF 2015. Uh, that specific booth for newcomers is not only providing written information, but also a bit of discussion or dialogue to understand further the jargons or internet ecosystem and the forum's role. Uh, and also don't forget to promote the booth because in Indonesia it's quite successful. Uh, other issues I would like to raise is I personally agree with Christina about bringing IGF voices to the UN General Assembly on YSIS 10. Thank you. So thank you very much. Maintenant, je j'invite Kossi uh, prendre la parole. Merci beaucoup, Président. Eh, je voudrais rester dans le même ordre d'idée que les autres. Si on s'en tient un peu aux propositions qui sont faites, on a environ 7 heures de travail, enfin 7 heures de temps spécifiquement qui sont gérées pour le travail. Mais je voudrais pour, proposer une autre alternative. Déjà, c'est qu'on puisse commencer peut-être à partir de 10 heures, qu'on termine à 18 heures, ce qui nous donne 8 heures globalement, mais dans les 8 heures globalement, on puisse avoir 6 heures de travail. Et on aura 2 heures de temps pour gérer les questions de nourriture et autres. Dans les 6 heures de temps, on a plusieurs organisations possibles. Déjà, je vais aller dans les orientations de base. On a souvent des sessions d'orientation qu'on donne dans la matinée. J'aurais souhaité qu'on puisse le gérer au niveau de la première journée, en, au lieu de faire 30 minutes, 30 minutes, qu'on gère ça en deux heures de temps durant la première journée, la journée zéro, on gère en deux heures de temps les orientations. Si possible, on puisse avoir aussi un secrétariat pour, qui serait de façon permanente pour l'orientation des participants, qu'ils soient les nouveaux ou les anciens. Euh, L'activité de, de séance de haut niveau et qui est souvent aussi en parallèle sur plusieurs activités. J'aurais souhaité que ce soit à la journée zéro et que cela se fasse aussi en deux heures de temps avec l'idée qu'ils puissent avoir une présentation préliminaire ou deux qui dure maximum 30 minutes et que les 1h30 puissent être consacrées à des échanges de très haut niveau pour les représentants de grandes entreprises, les représentants des, des ministères et autres et de la société civile pour que les gens puissent s'exprimer sur des questions assez pointues qui relèvent des des approches de décision de, ou des approches d'idées qui peuvent faire objet de consensus au niveau de nos différentes régions. Pour les activités, les séances plénières, je voudrais proposer que les séances plénières puissent être de l'ordre de trois heures maximum, vraiment un débordant de tous les temps, on puisse rester dans trois heures, mais dans ces trois heures qu'on puisse avoir deux heures de discussion, une heure maximum pour les interventions des présentateurs, ce qui nous donne un maximum de quatre présentateurs. Si chaque présentateur devait avoir 15 minutes, qu'on donne un maximum de quatre présentateurs pour les sessions plénières. Ce qui nous donne la chance d'avoir un espace ouvert pour les échanges. Pour les activités ateliers parallèles et les, at et les ateliers bonnes pratiques, j'aurais souhaité qu'on puisse les spécifier sur 1h30 avec l'exigence qu'on a 30 minutes maximum de présentation ou de, ou de mise en valeur d'une idée spécifique par des communicateurs, donc deux maximum, et qu'une heure de temps soit consacrée aux échanges de partage spécifique d'expérience. Ce qui nous donne la chance d'avoir de, euh, des situations de, de cas d'école qui est marché ailleurs qui puissent être expérimentés dans nos différents pays. Quand je prends les bonnes pratiques en particulier, je voudrais suggérer que ce soit focalisé sur les exigences actuelles des pays en développement qui sont orientées sur l'atteinte des objectifs du millénaire pour le développement 
dans mon pays, par exemple, nous avons euh, trois secteurs de base, l'éducation, l'agriculture et la santé. On a eu la chance de participer à certaines activités. Je prends par exemple Africa qui, qui est, a été fait au Caire la dernière fois. J'ai eu la chance d'y prendre part avec le, la deuxième personnalité de mon ministère. Cela a été apprécié, le, les activités qui ont été présentées ont été appréciées sur deux angles. Le premier angle, c'est qu'on avait des cas pratiques de choses qui étaient des besoins à nous, qu'on a pu observer, notamment les éléments sur l'organisation des élections en ligne et autres, qui sont des enjeux pour nous aujourd'hui au niveau national. Des cas précis comme ça, de besoins, sont des, des spécificités sur lesquelles on pourrait mettre l'accent quand on veut aborder les bonnes pratiques. Pour les sessions d'ouverture et de clôture, les sessions la session d'ouverture spécifiquement, j'aurais voulu que ce soit d'abord l'exigence d'avoir les cinq régions représentées dans le panel, mais qu'on puisse donner la possibilité aussi aux organisations internationales et aux pays autres de pouvoir en donner une ouverture spécifique. Pour la session de clôture, je voudrais proposer que ce soit assez bref, une qui est une action de synthèse euh, sous forme de recommande, grande recommandation de l'IGF, que ce soit accompagné d'un espace de débat ou d'échange, une trentaine ou une heure de temps pour le débat, et que juste après cela, ce soit juste une intervention, euh, celle de, du pays hôte qui nous donne euh, un communiqué de clôture, au lieu d'avoir plusieurs personnes qui interviennent aussi à la cérémonie de clôture. Mais de tout ceci, qu'on puisse mettre l'accent sur la nécessité d'avoir de la tradition à disposition dans toutes les salles, ce qui est un élément important pour la qualité et la possibilité qu'on offre aux uns et aux autres de pouvoir intervenir. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you, Kossi, for your uh, uh, practical suggestions. Uh, of course, uh, it will be very difficult to uh, provide uh, translation in every, every meeting room, so that, that is extremely costly and uh, is not feasible, but we will see how far we can get with, with them. Uh, there was a request from a uh, delegation from China, from China's mission. Uh, Ms. Chen, is, is Ms. Chen in the room? I don't see him. No, he's not in the room. Uh, Isan is next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, let me just uh, talk about uh, one interesting uh, remarks made by uh, Minister Ivo Ivanovsky in a ministerial event in Istanbul. I think it was an interesting remark he made. He said, uh, anytime I come to uh, this high-level meetings, I notice that there's only IT or telecommunication ministers present. Uh, I don't see ministers from other disciplines such as health, education, environment, trade. Uh, he asked the question, uh, do they think uh, IGF is not to there any interesting for them? Uh, I think it's a, a very stunning point that he made. Uh, yes, what about the other disciplines? Uh, usually, I also experience, I see those ministers, IT or telecommunications coming to the uh, high level events and they talk about very much in a similar format, the numbers, how much they achieved in their own country in terms of numbers, connectivity, internet uh, usage and things like that. And uh, they make their uh, comments and they leave. Uh, it's not a very much of an interactive uh, session for them either. Uh, unless they have a very good advisor, they don't learn much uh, also from IGF. Uh, all the processes taking place at IGF. Uh, so, I mean, I start thinking about how uh, we can improve the situation so everybody finds some kind of an uh, interesting uh, 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 point where they can contribute and they can learn something uh, from each other. Instead of maybe having one high-level meeting first day, maybe we should have several or several high-level meetings, uh, one for each day in the mornings, for instance, uh, with a different topic, of course. One on health, one on trade, one on security. And they can come in, the high level or the ministers of different uh, disciplines can come in and uh, 
not only uh, they talk up, they talk about how much uh, they are they are doing in their own uh, country in terms of uh, 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 internet usage and internet utilization, but also interactively learn from each other. Maybe they can gather some information in an in interactive and uh, informative uh, sessions. Uh, so that's just an idea. But uh, I think uh, if we are in a position to attract the interest of the high decision, uh, high level decision makers, we have to think a little bit differently uh, to format so that not only the certain parts of the government are interested, but uh, there might be interest for all of them. Thank you, Chair. So thank you very much. Um, so that, that, that might be something to consider. Uh, as far as I know, Olympic Games are organized in a way that each uh, federation of each individual sport is organizing its own event at the same time in the same place uh, and then this is what we know Olympic Games in reality is the compilation of uh, parallel games organized individually by each uh, uh, federation so transposing that to what what just Ian said maybe we uh, make one one stream devoted to ICTs in education or internet in education and, and allow, in parallel of everything else, we concentrate this year, or meaning in 15, maybe to education. Not that we should, I'm just interpreting what, what Ihan just said. Please consider that option as well. Next speaker on the list is Desire. Mr. Chairman, fellow MAG members, um, I'd just like to make a comment about the involvement of MAG members. Um, I must admit that I am seen um, and, and I'm thankful that uh, there is a lot of effort being put to ensuring that new MAG members are given a really good orientation. Um, however, I'd like to, um, to, have to, to ask that that be extended. I think that since this meeting is being organized, uh, um, the forum, sorry, is being uh, coordinated by the MAG, that one of the things that should happen is that MAG members should really be involved in the workshops, not as um, observers, but rather as people directly involved in the process. So as part of that, we, if, we, if it would be possible for to have MAG members assigned to workshops, um, either on a voluntary basis or on a, a um, selection basis, a, a, a random selection basis, that would allow, to, would ensure that all MAG members um, get the opportunity of working alongside the, the, the workshop and therefore understand better. Um, that would also, I think, help in the self-assessment that we need to go through uh, later on. Um, to assist in that process, I would like to suggest that we could have uh, maybe a, a room available for MAG members where, whereby they're able to meet in the mornings and have a briefing and in the evenings and have a debriefing so that we could identify issues that have been encountered during the, the various workshops, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that would then give us the ability to keep our fingers on the pulse of what it is that's, um, tr that has transpired through, throughout the days. I'd like to also say something um, on the benefit uh, to the participants of the IGF. Uh, 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 Right now, we have a situation, and, and the IGF is intended to be a place where you can have dialogue, open dialogue on any I, IG issue without fear or favor. Um, and that's an excellent thing, and I also realize that the capacity building opportunities will uh, ensure that we can identify some best practices. But I'd like to see this extended a little bit more, because for some countries, when they send an individual to, to the IGF, what they, they, they want is for that individual to bring back something that's tangible, something that's implementable. And if we could have um, maybe tracks or one, a track or a theme which will allow, provide the complete solution. So it provides, it identifies the policies necessary for a particular theme, uh, the, the legislation, the procedure, the implementation, um, implementation issues, 
activities, and possibly a testimonial um, from countries which have implemented one of a, a specific solution. So that if, let's suppose, um, a country has been good at, uh, at, at uh, providing for disabled persons, that they could then um, provide us with the, their, their instructions, that is the how-to instructions as to how this was done in their countries, thereby helping especially developing countries um, to, to assist them in that process. So thank you very much. Uh, in other words, we're, we're, you're reinforcing the need to, uh, to do the best practice, uh, focus on best practice compilations in the, uh, in the, in the meeting and run up to the meeting. So thank you. Next uh, is Constance. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll try to be brief and also to focus my comments on, on uh, structural aspects, understanding that we'll talk about themes uh, later. Um, with regards to the structure, I think we, we need to integrate in our discussions how we're going to structure the intercessional work, which uh, I understand should start in, um, in the coming weeks. Um, so one possible way of doing this uh, once we have the themes agreed is to have uh, MAG individuals or non-MAG individuals uh, volunteer to pick up uh, the workflow, uh, one, one volunteer or a group of volunteers per theme. Um, that work, whether it's best practices, whether it's uh, cooking outcomes for dynamic coalitions or simply putting together workshops, would feed into the events uh, of the IGF week, uh, and we would have workshops, best practices forums, uh, maybe flash sessions, dynamic coalition events, and all of those events uh, organized per theme uh, could feed into specific main sessions, understanding that main sessions would not um, overlap with any of those uh, specific activities. Um, I, I like the idea, I think it was Brazil, to have main sessions at the end of the day uh, because, again, it, it could show, it could be the end point of a progression, intercessional work and then best practices, then workshops, all that feeding into main sessions. Uh, and I would be inclined to have the high-level event uh, merged with the closing uh, at the end of the week uh, to encourage uh, high-level participants to uh, be there. Um, and uh, listen to uh, basically a presentation of the outcome of our work throughout the year and throughout the IGF week. Thank you. So thank you, Constance, uh, for your uh, proposals. Uh, next uh, on the list is Sun Jung. And my apologies if I mis mispronounced your name. No, correct, Sun Jung. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to make some comments and suggestions regarding preparatory process very shortly. Um, considering we have quite enough time to prepare next IGF meeting, comparably last IGF, I think carrying out um, open consultation or getting input document to ask other participants' opinion other than make members about structure of IGF 2015, including but not limited to how many workshops and main sessions should next IGF have and what criteria has to apply to evaluate workshop, and what criteria has to apply to select workshop, and time changes which host country has proposed today, and any other issues that we have right now uh, would be necessary because MEC member is not the only one who decides those matters, and there's need to include more participants, not just in the ICF meeting, but from the process of preparing. Some MEC members says um, that the number of workshops is too many and others are not. We have various opinions on every issues. However, this is only MEC members' opinion, at least from the point of non-MEC non members' view. As a facilitator, not as a decision maker, listening others' opinion would be more effective way for others to think ICF as their event, not some um, small group's event. If we make final decision on these issues after considering the accumulated opinion from others, we will have more legitimacy and bigger support with the structure of next IGF. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, for your comments. Now next, 
next on the list is Matthew, and after that will be Bianca, and I understand that there will be attempt to do some presentation during that intervention. Matthew, please, you have a floor. You have a microphone. Matthew is not willing to speak. Okay, then the next, in that case, uh, it goes straight to Bianca. Um, hi, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, the civil society kind of discussed um, during lunch, and we have an, a proposal uh, for the structure of the IGF. So uh, Leah and I'll also Jack would speak a bit more on that, and afterwards I'll add on uh, my thoughts on making it a bit more youth friendly. Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson, and thank you, Bianca, for uh, using. Uh, letting us uh, use your slot for to make this intervention. I also thank the MAG members for your indulgence in allowing us to present this. Um, so over lunch, a, c a number of uh, civil society MAG members got together and we were trying to um, kind of put on paper in a similar vein that Hartmut was doing, um, a, an outline of a program. And the rationale for how we uh, went about it was um, to identify a few issues that uh, we saw as needed to be addressed. Just before uh, we go into this, I'll just like to say to put on my uh, humble hat as a newcomer and say do we understand that a lot of these discussions have happened in the past and we do acknowledge that these discussions have been happening for years. We would very much uh, like to thank Hartmut as well for the, uh, for the presentation earlier and we hope that this um, can be used as an input into that discussion. Um, so the, in terms of the rationale, what we were trying to address here is to first to allow people to more easily follow different tracks um, and uh, also to avoid clashing between workshops and main sessions. Um, we also thought that there would be a logic where it would be logical to have a flow where the workshops and different tracks would flow into main sessions and perhaps culminate in main sessions. Um, we also noticed that the event often loses momentum towards the end uh, of the of the fourth day, so these are the elements that we wanted to address. And uh, as Jack will now show, the the main point is there to uh, to tip the balance towards the end with the main sessions uh, in the last two days, rather than at the beginning of the of the event. So uh, thank you, and I'll, ja I'll let uh, Jack speak. Hi. So. Basically, the idea was as Leia outlined. Um, rather than having the main sessions throughout the four days, we will have we will focus the main sessions or focus sessions towards the last two days. So then we can dedicate the first kind of like two and a half days to really just have parallel workshops running and identify within the sub themes. So there's probably about six to eight sub themes, but understanding that not all of them will eventually end up in the main session discussion. Um, and you will be able then to follow, say, workshop. Um, sub-theme A throughout days one, two, and three. And then for the workshop organizers um, to then input into the main or focus session discussions. And we understand that this has happened in previous um, IGFs before, and maybe there are some sort of like a practicalities and evaluation that we can do to see how we can work on this better. Um, and maybe not all workshop types will necessarily feed into the main sessions. So for example, there could be workshop types that's focusing on capacity building, and maybe those will not um, then feed into the main sessions, but maybe those that are more around sort of um, discussing context issues or trying to come to solutions or um, trying to come up with best practices that could possibly feed into it. So for workshop organizers then to say come up with um, one key question for discussion at the main session and one key issue or recommendation that came out from the workshop. And then for these to be um, screen projected on, on overhead projectors beforehand so that it, it also facilitates a, a better, uh, not better, but um, it also enables greater participation. Um, and uh, and for this to work, um, then they will necessarily need to have quite strong facilitators. And we understand from the Hyderabad IGF, for example, there were like um, main sessions with very strong co-facilitators who were able to sort of move the conversation going. So that's possibly one way to to go about it. And then in that way, then the the workshops will 
you know, the, the conversations and the richness from the dialogue from the different workshops will then funnel into the main session discussions um, that will sort of lead towards something um, um, broader and stronger. So we really very much look forward to, to um, and also as, uh, as Leah was saying, it also helps to um, uh, address uh, uh, one of the, the, the issues of, of kind of, uh, by, the, by day four, usually a lot of people kind of like check out and leave. So now instead you sort of like, you know, you really do, you, you sort of build towards something that is very concrete towards the end of the workshop. Um, so we're very much um, keen to hear f um, feedback and thoughts on this. We also were discussing amongst a few of us um, during lunchtime. I also spoke to a um, uh, government delegation from Argentina who shared a lot of um, her, her learnings from the previous workshops to help us fine tune this as well. Um, and the ad um, uh, so that's really around this um, structure proposal that we would like to share. And then there is another point that I would just like to very quickly um, talk about, which is um, day zero capacity building track. Um, uh, capacity building day and really like to emphasize on, on using day zero as a capacity building day but not just on an introduction to IGF but also around key thematic issues of IGF. I think that will be quite a useful thing to have also and to have like different people to organize like a kind of like capacity building around around um, content as well as the process and structure. And, um, and then I'll turn over to Bianca. Um, so other than this structure, um, I've also uh, come to think of, you know, a few ways of making IGF a bit more youth or newcomers friendly. So uh, on top of the, um, the health desk booth, which has been raised, uh, which I totally agree, uh, the IGF guide, which makes, um, you know, the th thematic issues and uh, other things more accessible to youth. Um, there are also, you know, potentially any ideas of a youth IGF, which is already concurrent with the, the Asia, Pacific one, uh, Asia Pacific one. So it could take form of, you know, a capacity building workshop on day zero or um, other forms. But I think this would definitely be important for youth to take their stance on IG issues. Um, the other part of it is other than the MAG badge, which has been raised by Azumi, uh, I think MAG members should have the responsibility as a mentor, uh, not only to youth, but also newcomers. And we also have the commitment to speak to them. So I think that's quite important to establish as a MAG member. Um, so those are the few suggestions I have to make um, IGF a bit more youth friendly. So I really appreciate people's comment. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is another option this, uh, that could be considered that uh, only please, when you think about uh, IGF, uh, think also in practical terms. I, I would like to repeat once again that there are some limitations, and those limitations are linked with uh, interpretation services. Uh, interpretation is uh, usually calculated in blocks of three hours. We can split one block in three, of three hours in half. That gives us two times 90 minutes with the minimum break in between. I think that that is what uh, interpreters usually tolerate, that if there is a half an hour in between those 90 uh, minute blocks. So if we go, for instance, two hours uh, uh, workshop, then it will be uh, 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 billed as uh, three hours, whether we use three hours or not. And uh, uh, if we, if we, and we cannot go beyond that. So that that is one of the limitations. That also determines the usually sessions are three hours long, uh, if they are uh, translated. So that that is please take that into account. Whatever sort of uh, thinking you you put in in those. Second element is w uh, which we we're facing every year, is that the number of um, proposals far exceed, uh, let's say, uh, resources available. And with the resources, I mean rooms available and time available. So last year, we had to cut about 60% of all proposals because there were too many. And when you look uh, in practical terms, what we have uh, at our disposal, these are four days. If we take uh, away uh, let's say, at, let's assume half day, which we would devote to a very high level segment, nothing in parallel. So that leaves us uh, still with, with the uh, three and a half days uh, of parallel sessions. In one day, we cannot make more than uh, 40 events because uh, 10 tracks uh, in parallel 
uh, four times 90 minutes, it makes 40. If we take uh, three and a half days, in the best case, we get about uh, 140 uh, sessions possible. We cannot get more than 140 sessions. That is a limitation. And 140 sessions, uh, we never get to, to, that, to that because uh, there are some must-be events not only opening ceremony and uh, uh, letting ministers address if we want to have uh, a high-level uh, presence, but then we need to do a closing. And closing, again, m many people said, uh, number, number of, of uh, participants leave already by that time. So uh, we, we really are looking at about 100, 120 uh, slots for uh, workshops or events, and, and that is what we have. And that we need to, to put in the best, sort of most rational way uh, in use for, for participants. Please, these are these limitations that you need to have uh, in mind. Uh, also, I see the time is, time is going, and we have, uh, I would like maybe to uh, try to draw this part of conversation to, to conclusion maybe by uh, 4.15, if possible. <clears throat> I have uh, Fiona, Lynn, uh, uh, Juan Alfonso, Olusengun, uh, uh, Arnold from Netherlands, Avri, Marilyn, and Virat on, on the table. Now I see also Michael and, and Daher. Daher, I, I, I saw you earlier. So I would, I would assume that this would be uh, the list of, of interventions for this part of the session, and then we will move on uh, to the fur further discussion of, um, uh, I, I would suggest, what would be the themes uh, of the, of the uh, IGF 2015, and um, also better shaping understanding about intersessional process. So intersessional process, uh, online participants having problems to hearing me. They're, they are having some problems with the sound and are asking that speakers please speak closer to the microphone to facilitate the, the audio. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so I would like also to, to hear more about intercessional, because what I heard so far is that we need to address a specific sort of subjects, and that uh, leaves me to think that th these would be topics uh, for best practices that we would uh, work throughout the whole uh, uh, period and would come uh, with a mature document uh, to the uh, IGF in Brazil, which then would be presented in Brazil, as we did in uh, Istanbul. The difference is that for Istanbul, we had seven weeks to, pre to, to develop those documents. Now we hopefully will have uh, almost nine months to develop those documents. So, and we may uh, hope that those uh, best practice compilations would come to IGF uh, Brazil already has a, a mature, uh, well-developed uh, papers uh, for, for, uh, and useful for, for delegations or member states. So uh, if that's acceptable, I'm, I'm asking now Fiona to make her comments. Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, maybe just to uh, comment on a variety of things I've heard from colleagues today. And I think that it would be helpful to have some clarity amongst MAG members about the role of the MAG in the Day Zero events. Um, officially, the Day Zero events are not part of the IGF, but they do sort of expropriate and use the IGF brand. And there has been, over the course of recent years, an overlapping of some of the Day Zero events and the actual IGF activities. So maybe we could have a discussion at some point about that process. And if nothing else, um, I'm not saying that the MAG needs to get involved in setting the agenda of the Day Zero events, but maybe there should be a time frame of understanding of what's happening and what's not happening. Um, so that could be useful. Um, I think I've also heard colleagues suggest that we sort of change the schedule, which is always a good option and thing to consider. 
But if we are looking for sort of senior political participation, and it does um, give a certain sense of, of legitimacy to these type of events, we have to be mindful of schedules. So if there's going to be a ministerial, it has to be closely tied to the actual opening ceremony. There can't be multiple days in between because you'll lose participation as a practical matter for planning. Um, and then the other thing I think I heard someone suggest was to have the day zero activities at the end of the week. And I would just urge uh, some caution and concern with the idea that there has to be some kind of ministerial event to bless or endorse the IGF, which sort of defeats the purpose of multi-stakeholder from my perspective. Um, so concerns on that. Um, I'd also like to voice support for the idea that uh, Sojung put forward about putting whatever proposal we have out up on the IGF website to get input and feedback in some fashion. I think that's a great practice and one the IGF and the MAG should be adopting as a general best practice. Um, and then I know tomorrow we're talking about the workshops and the main sessions, so I'll leave the specifics for that till tomorrow. But just to point out to everyone that there's an inherent tension between wanting to limit the number of workshops, make it more user accessible, and make it more user friendly, and the, the IGF being a victim of its own success and actually having being oversubscribed in terms of people wanting to do events. Last year was the first year we actually rejected workshop proposals. So for the first time in nine years, we said no, and we said no to 60%. And I can imagine we're going to have more. So it's just something to keep in mind if we're going to be limiting things, how the impact is. I mean, I think my personal perspective is that I would like to eliminate the main sessions. I don't find them quite as useful anymore, unless there's a specific activity and use that more for workshops. But again, just to be uh, cognizant of the tensions in that process and the need that we're going to, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. It took the, uh, the MAG eight years to say no to workshop proposals. So I can only imagine it's going to be tougher next year. So thank, thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can think of uh, also establishing kind of a de deadline for uh, submitting requests to the Secretariat for activities in day zero. Until now, uh, MAG hasn't been involved, and, and I, maybe MAG should not be involved in activities of day zero. Uh, but certain, certainly um, uh, Secretariat should keep uh, the MAG informed uh, which requests have come to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the Secretariat uh, for room allocations, and at least uh, we are uh, we're informed about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lynn, please. I understand that Jackie already spoke uh, and, and then use your time uh, dur during the presentation. Lynn, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I fully agree with so many of the more recent comments talking about some of the different structures, Avery's earlier comments about um, looking to make this much more participatory. And I think I'll, I have a question to you at the end, but preface this with, you know, I've been deeply engaged in all the WISIS proceedings, WISIS 1, WISIS 2, and every one of the IGFs. And I have to say, I've been listening very carefully the last day and a half, and am having a bit of a hard time matching up the discussions here with, on the one hand, um, you know, what I see as a, as a very clear need for the IGF to step up its game, and two, the opportunity to do so. So, and I don't know if that's just because of where we are at this point in the agenda, but I guess my question to you is, is it, do you intend to close on these more administrative aspects of this, the actual structure of the days ahead of the themes, or might we actually go to the themes and perhaps, I would hope, actually try and reach a more sort of focused structure or focused set of objectives or impacts we hope to get out of the IGF and then perhaps come back and, and finalize this later. So, I mean, I guess the, the one thing that maybe I didn't say as clearly as I would have liked to is I, I think it's important that we really try to find a way to make a significant impact on Internet governance at the global level. And you used an analogy earlier about the Olympic Games. I mean, it almost seems to me that that's the way the MAG has actually mm -hmm. run the IGF in past years. And rather than have it be an aggregation of a number of different games or themes that come together because there's sort of support, frankly, that the MAG, being very participatory and going out, as she just said, for um, support, that we actually try and find a way to concretely move the global Internet governance agenda forward. And I think that requires us to probably be a little more focused and a little more structured than perhaps we have been historically. So thank you, Lynn. Um, 
this this discussion is not conclusive, and, and uh, please understand that the agenda that was proposed was based on our knowledge at the time when the agenda was constructed of uh, different thoughts. So we heard uh, that, uh, and again, I apologize, some of those were, were based on rumors or, let's say, uh, couloir conversations. We heard that, that hosts would like to do um, event in Net Mundial style. So in order to understand what does it mean, uh, I thought that, that the general discussion about the, how we reach there, what is the structure of, of the meeting, you know, either we start at, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and before going to beach and getting burned and then going back to the office and saying, oh, hey, I was in the, in the conference, uh, uh, or we start, start conference in, in uh, time as usual and so on, these type of things. Of course, the substance will determine or influence also the, the form. And uh, I do not intend to conclude and to suggest anything conclusive at the end of the discussion, but that was, in my view, needed for our own understanding, uh, setting up also the, the framework in which then we will discuss uh, substantive, substantive issues. The number of, of uh, main sessions, uh, the question that we always had, had trouble to, uh, to uh, agree upon, and even last year when we agreed to minimize number of main sessions, we ended up uh, at the end with the, with the full main sessions because they were added as, as we went, progressed in, in, the, in the preparations. Uh, the, same, the same thing, uh, there might have been an event uh, that uh, will pop up uh, after every decision is made and we need to be able to uh, bring that sort of uh, new item in, in the agenda uh, no matter what, uh, the, the Snowden thing uh, was brought in very last minute because the preparations were, have been finished already for Bali meeting. So you see, our task is to, to really to, to think through and prepare meeting uh, for the best use of, of uh, participants. Um, uh, Juan, Juan Alfonso, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to endorse what Lynn just said, but I ask the floor because I'm puzzled. I need clarification in a ba very basic uh, issue that some of the previous uh, interventions and even one of your interventions have me a little bit confused. And I remember at the beginning, well, I'm new in MAC, so I'm asking, maybe I'm asking, maybe this change. But I remember at the beginning that even Nitin Desai insisted that IGF was about public policy issues that pertain to Internet governance. So uh, let me explain. A minister of a country is speaking about how they use Internet for health. Um, maybe that's interesting, but that's not Internet governance. Maybe that's it in an ICT for D event or an Internet for Development event, but not in this event. Or a workshop in that same line is not a public policy issue pertaining to the Internet governance. So I, I, know, I, I know that the boundary is uh, the frontier is very fuzzy, but I think it's up to us here to really clear out the line because this is not an, an, an ICT for D um, um, event and and not because that's not interesting or useful or needed, but because we're wasting an opportunity to really configure the internet, uh, international internet governance uh, to, in the direction that, that we want. And so I want this clarification because I hear many of my colleagues that have this confusion of ICT4D because I come also from ICT4D. You know, I was in the ICT task force of the United Nations and then the Global Alliance. We have very clear this boundary, but maybe this boundary is not very clear for some of our colleagues. And I please ask you, uh, Chairman, to please clarify on this. Maybe change and maybe this IGF now is about internet for development and, and not only internet for uh, governance. So please, I need a clarification. Uh, I, I think this, this is not a new issue that we have been uh, discussing or this has been on the table for many years. It depends how you interpret the definition of internet governance, whether you interpret it in a narrow sense and consider internet governance being uh, internet governance of uh, critical internet resources only or you interpret in a wider sense uh, that brings uh, many other aspects, including developmental aspect, 
uh, educational aspect, health aspect, and, and, and everything. So uh, since the very beginning, uh, IGF has approached uh, issue with a, with understanding or using a wider interpretation, and always we had on the agenda uh, uh, different type of issues uh, that uh, that has uh, also a public policy uh, uh, angle on on that uh, because uh, how to organize how how to use ICTs in education also is public policy issue. It's not. It's not just uh, who controls uh, uh, or where main main uh, root servers are, are located and so on. Uh, I hope that clarified your your question. So I am going to next speaker. No. Thank you. I have here the definition. I, I know the narrow the, the distinction between narrow internet governance and on wide, and I'm and, and I'm for the wide one, but. For instance, in paragraph 72 of Tunis' agenda, this is the one who creates this, the first, when the terms of reference for the Internet governance is set, the first one says, discuss public policy issues related to key elements of Internet governance in order to foster the sustainability, robustness, security, stability, and development of the Internet. I, I'm not saying that uh, Internet use in medicine is not important or it's not a public policy issue. But what we should see is how the international internet governance could foster or, or, or makes easier the use of the internet for medicine. That's the thing, that's the yes. angle we have, we have to take. Not, not just this application for medicine and that, but how internet governance can help development. How internet government can help the, uh, can help the use of, of this and that. Uh, that's my interpretation. And I think that we should debate, because otherwise it's just an, an ICT for the uh, approach. And well, OK, that, that, that's good, but I, I, I'm not convinced yet. So I hope you will be convinced once you will come to Joao Pessao and participate in the meeting. I, I think that the substance of the meeting is very much uh, dependent on those who organize uh, the workshops and, and all, uh, uh, all events that uh, we're planning here. Our task is to put those elements together in the best uh, possible way that uh, uh, all participants benefit from, from them. So uh, I call on Olu Segun, and my apologies if my pronunciation was not, not exact. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe, sorry, maybe you could introduce yourself since you, you uh, were not present in, in the morning when everybody introduced. But that should take not more than 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, I'm Shagun, an founding member of Nigeria Internet Governance Forum. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to see that uh, most of the contextual issues that we have raised at the local level are being addressed here. One of them, that we have the issues of cyber security and the issues of um, chat online protection and how internet governance can be used to enable uh, agricultural development. These issues are, are so contentious to us. And also, uh, I put myself in the position of learning. I've been here since yesterday. I'm still learning. I've been observing. I have heard a lot of rumors about MAG and uh, IGF. But by being here, I discovered that a lot of things <laughs> are not being passed across to us, really. So it's changing my uh, perception about IGF. Uh, I'm still watching and I'm still learning. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope that you will bring uh, only the best uh, of the MAG uh, and will become our ambassador in Nigeria. Uh, Avri, please. Thank you. I wanted to speak favorably about many of the things that I've heard. The notion of working with themes, the notion of taking those themes from the things that have been brought forward by comments, of taking those themes and working throughout the year to achieve something and hopefully come to an outcome are all really good. One of the things that concerns me is this notion of prohibiting work sessions during plenaries. The people that are attracted to these two types of sessions are often a different group of people. 
And I think that we cut ourselves short by saying you can have no work session, you can have no workshop because a ministerial is going on, because an opening session is going on, because, you know, ministers are, are talking and people should be there to listen to them. They won't. It'll be a good chance for those people to go to the beach. But um, so, so I, I, I think that we should be careful about sort of taking time when we could have a bunch of parallel sessions. I tend to support the idea that we have as many parallel themes as we can support, being careful not to have inter-theme conflicts or intra-theme conflicts so that someone that is following a theme can follow it without having to, because the main point about attending a session is that you intend to participate. You can watch them all on TV later for the, for the appreciation of what others were doing. But the, the point about going is because you want to participate, you want to say something. So, so I think that, that that certain opposite, certainly we want to avoid duplication. Certainly we want to avoid panels, though I've been told by people that there are some people that won't come unless there are some panels. So if we have to, let's set aside a number of panels, but be very strict about it. Um, in terms of starting late, I was, I was originally against it. But now I've thought about it, and I don't mind a 12-hour day. And the, the idea that a bunch of us could meet in the morning, educators and those that want to sort of help in terms of, you know, teaching people about some of the issues, doing the IGF 101, the IG 101s, you know, we could meet them. We could have little sessions on the beach and do a Socratic thing and actually do that. So perhaps starting in the later day can work and you know we can use the morning as, a, as an educational opportunity while other people are sort of playing on the beach. So I think that that, that, that can be a workable model. Uh, um, I, I, I think in terms of the ministerials, I think having them at the end would be sort of problematic because then it looks like we're asking for their approval. It looks like we're, we're coming up and saying, you know, dear, Mr. Dear, dear ministers, here's our solution, you know, please bless it. So I, I think whether it's in the middle or, or at the beginning based on logistics, I, I, I think it's, it, it, it's best. Uh, one of the things that I did want to say is going forward from here, we've come up with many different issues to work on, theme, uh, not themes, I don't want to use that, but m modalities to work on. And that perhaps we can start getting into smaller groups that sort of take some of these ideas, flesh them out, work the details, and then come back to the sessions and sort of say, we took this idea, we, we played it out, and, and hear what do people think, and also go out to the community as was suggested to get to get more comments from people. So uh, I think a lot is good has gone on, but but I think we have to sort of now start start threading it so that we can get deeper into the issues. Thanks. So thank you, Avery. Very useful comments, uh, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. My comments are going to be fairly uh, short, I hope. One comment I want to make is that I do think that um, the benefit of the high-level event on day zero has been increasingly to bring ministers uh, to the IGF. And as I said earlier, and I would urge all of us to do this, we need to make a concerted effort to find speaking opportunities for those uh, ministers in workshops and in other events so that they are uh, able to justify staying with us throughout. I am uncomfortable with having such an event at the end of the meeting because I think it does, as others have said, imply that there would be some kind of document to approve, which I do not think has been agreed. I share um, the concern that I think Aubrey was stating um, last year we had what I would have called main sessions, and those main sessions were held in big rooms, but they weren't really a plenary. And that meant that multiple workshops could go on at the same time. You could pick a topic that many people were interested in, but not all people were interested in. 
And I would just say that as fascinating as the IANA transition is, that it only will attract a subsection of the attendees. So it sh I would prefer that we allow workshops to go on at the same time as those main sessions. Uh, plenary to me is something that really justifies the attendance of absolutely everyone and to me those are uh, few and far between other than the opening uh, session and the closing session. Um, finally, I wanted to make a quick comment uh, about dynamic coalitions and relying uh, too much on work being done by either dynamic coalitions or uh, national and regional IGF initiatives. All of these entities are unique. They all have their own um, uh, organic characteristics and uh, not all of the dynamic coalitions are um, as well resourced or as well developed as the one that was described earlier. So I would just ask us to pause before we start thinking about assigning intercessional work to any group that has, after all, its own uh, work program and then try to make sure how we would um, be able to respect their situation and needs while also reflecting any relevant input in relation to um, uh, contributing into the program. I too like the idea that we ought to go out for at least a short public consultation on our ideas and I support Kosi's idea that we move up a little bit at least to start at 10 a.m. I'm just going to say it will be very difficult to explain to um, business businesses and I think to many governments that we are starting that late in the day. Whether that's just a perception problem, it is still a problem. Thank you. So thank you, Marilyn. Um, we have one online participant, uh, Iz Izumi, uh, Izumi Okutani. Uh, Izumi Good afternoon, Okutani. everybody. So um, can you all hear me? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, so I agree with comments made by some of the colleagues that is, it's important for IGF to have clear takeaways and to do this I feel that it's first important for newcomers to have access to basic information before joining the sessions as well as have some kind of structure in the session. So based on this I do like the idea of one, having capacity building track including the contents of major issues. I think this was some an idea that was expressed by one of the, um, the our representatives from the civil society. The second is uh, to have main sessions after workshop as compilation of what has been discussed um, as a related theme. So I quite like um, the suggestion which was made by Constance um, in having um, a theme per day and then have related workshops and then have the main theme related to this topic at the end of the day. I think this would give some uh, structure to this session uh, while also giving some diversity to um, allowing uh, various workshops being conducted. I also note a few people have mentioned the idea of um, having a help desk style of booth. I support this idea if this is something that uh, we have enough resources in addition to the intercessional work. Thank you. So uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Izumi, for uh, your comments and joining us from distance. Uh, so next is Virat, then Michael Baher, and then we will draw a conclusion and we will move, open up the next, the next uh, uh, subject and then Mark, Mark, you will be first on that one. Uh, Virat, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me uh, just make some quick points based on what I've heard. Um, be, uh, firstly, on the main sessions issue, sort of we're discussing right now the shaping and the structure of the IGF. Just on the main sessions, uh, I think we should give Avery's point uh, good consideration, not only because she makes sense in what she's saying, but also the fact that our experience in Istanbul was that the four main sessions that were held, access, network neutrality, um, internet ecosystem, and INR transition had 80 to 90 percent full room throughout the three hours, even though there were 10 to 11 workshops running parallelly. So people 
chose where they want to be. So we have experience from there, and therefore we shouldn't worry about losing people in that sense. Um, the second is, uh, the comment was made on day zero. I think uh, whether we bring it under the umbrella of MAG or not, the fact is that it is under the IGF umbrella. So minimally, the MAG should be fully aware of what sessions are being planned, and they should be able to provide inputs into that or at least participate into that. One of our challenges was that uh, at the last uh, uh, IGF, even MAG members had very little idea about some of the day zero events till 48 hours before the event was being held. And when we requested information from the organizers, it wasn't coming through. So I don't want to get into a lot of details, but I think it will help to broadly keep the MAG informed so the MAG can in turn then inform others because it's been said several times in the room now that the MAG should help and be at the help desk and wear a badge, et cetera. But, you know, in this case, there's a challenge. Um, on the issue of uh, uh, making workshops more interactive, I think we'll have to find a way to actually limit the panels or remove panels and actually ask for roundtables. Because as I've said, when we, even when we gave higher marks for innovative um, uh, formats, of the 208 proposals received, 95% had panels. So either we remove panels as an option and then everybody moves to the round table. That would require the host country to uh, inform us whether they are in a position to provide round table settings in at least eight of the 10 rooms or seven of the 10 rooms. That's the only way it will happen. Otherwise, we're back to the panels. Of course, the round tables will require two facilitators each. And that's a design problem, but that comes with the flexibility that the host will have to show in terms of availability. Uh, my comment on the, on the, on the, there was an excellent presentation made by the civil society. I'm not sure if the slide can come back up, but I think it assumed four uh, themes from the colors that I saw, uh, four sub-themes and four main sessions for two hours each. Uh, and here is the challenge, and we just need to keep this in mind. Um, if you have 20 workshops and total of 80 workshops, 20 for each of the themes, and have them input into the main session, which is what was recommended, that's a two-minute intervention each, that's 40 minutes. If you have 10 to 12 speakers speak for only four to five minutes, that's another 60 minutes. Between the opening and the moderator and presentations, that's about 10 minutes. And if the moderator takes only 15 seconds to go from one presenter to the other, only 15 seconds, you are at 117 minutes out of the 120 minutes that had been allocated. So you will get 32 people in, or 30 people in, including the workshop presenters, but that's the limit to a two-hour session. I just keep bringing us back to the limitations of minutes because we've run these sessions and that's what happens. So my request would be to consider in that design a three-hour session uh, because that also then allows us to address the issue that Fiona had suggested which is we will need in this uh, IGF high-level participants because we want to take the messaging back to New York. So if we have to accommodate 25 high-level participants from the government between the opening ceremonies and two three-hour main sessions, which are not exclusive, not plenaries, we're able to at least put them on the panel, give them six to seven minutes, that's all. Imagine flying down all the way for a seven-minute speaking slot. And that will only happen if you have three hours and if you have two main sessions. Um, I would request two things, Mr. Chairman, before we proceed any further. We should absolutely take a call finally on the time. Right now, the House seems to be having two very separate views on 9 o'clock and 1 o'clock, and secondly, on the sub-themes, because with four sub-themes, the game is different. At six sub-themes, the game is completely different. So if we can just close these two points, then others can flow from there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, honestly, I'm not sure that the voting is the right way to proceed uh, sp specifically on the time issue. Uh, I think that will drive us slightly in the, in the wrong, wrong uh, uh, direction. Uh, but um, what we would need to do is to go to the uh, discussions of themes, and this is my intention. Uh, to, to go and sort of to see what would be the substance of our conversation. Uh, Michael, please, uh, and then uh, Bahir, and after that we will go to the themes 
uh, Mark will be first, and Amelia will be second on that on that topic, and then Ihan. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my first intervention, and uh, one of the advantages of waiting so long is that many very good points that I was going to make have already been made, including ones by Marilyn and Virat. Um, over the last 10 years, one of the most famous quotes about the Internet and Internet governance that we've heard was from Vint Cerf, who used to say, if it ain't broke, why, why fix it? Uh, I thought that the IGF schedule was one of those things that we didn't really need to fix. Uh, I've been only involved for the MAG for one year, but last year I think we did a very good job of accommodating a lot of very innovative workshops. We were able to reward those people who worked very hard to put together very good proposals by giving them a slot on the program. Uh, I'm very concerned that we have fewer workshop slots this, this next year. We will frustrate a lot of people who will put a lot of work into developing good, good proposals. Um, and I, I do not understand what problem we're trying to fix by not having workshops in parallel with the main session. I could see having only eight workshops at the same time as a main session because more people will want to go to the main session, but not having any workshops, that would be a terrible loss, and it would, I think, undermine the most important output of the IGF. The IGF is not like any other international meeting. It's not a centralized process where people come together to try to find agreements. It's all about peer-to-peer -peer or P2P, people-to-people governance. It's about people talking to each other about their specific problems, and, f and for that to happen, the more workshops, the better because it allows us to find the people who are working on problems like the one we have, which we can discuss in the workshop, and then spend three or four hours at the bar or on the beach really digging into the issues. So I, I urge us to think about what the real output of IGF has been, what the real success of this, this process has been. It's not been proposals or agreements on anything. It's been people talking to each other, people sharing information, people building relationships that can continue and in some case build into partnerships that will develop really important new business initiatives, new civil society initiatives, new government policies in the future. Um, if we want 5,000 people to attend, we want a wide breadth of workshops, we want even more variety in the proposals, and we want even higher quality. If we decide to have 70 rather than 120 workshops, we're going to narrow down, we're going to focus on the things we always focus on, and we're going to end up with a lot of debates on IANA transition and talking about WISIS, and that might attract 2,000 people. If you go further and you say no workshops at the same time of main sessions, you're now going to throw out some great proposals and those people aren't going to come either. So now you're down to 1,200 people. This is, not, this is not what we really want. We want a broader discussion. I can sum this up by the best tweet from Istanbul. Those of you who know me know I like to tweet. There was a precious, perfect tweet at Istanbul. It said, what is this meeting about? The internet? Internet governance? Or governing internet governance? And that person had come there wanting to talk about the internet and the, and the broader picture. And we gave them something. We're not going to do that if we have twice, half as many workshops. I'm really worried that fewer workshops mean that we're going to have, um, have to throw out the most innovative, controversial, outside-the-box proposals, the things that are new. We're going to end up forcing people to go to sessions they don't want to go to. And that's not in our interest. I, I really think we need to think about our real output here, which is more information to more people, more connections. I also think one very specific suggestion that hasn't been mentioned yet but was discussed in the past, it would be very useful if somehow we ask the proposers to rate their, their workshop proposal in terms of the depth of expertise expected among participants in the discussion. Uh, in some ways, this would be like the menus we have at Thai restaurants in the United States, where you have one pepper, two pepper, or three pepper, depending on how spicy it is. You might have three levels, sort of the general audience, the undergraduate level, 
and the graduate level. And people who go to the graduate level sessions would know that they're going to hear a lot of, of uh, acronyms and a lot of people are going to assume that people know the basics of the issue. But I think that would help us too, making sure that people got to the right sessions and got to meet the people they really want to meet. Thank you very much. So thank, thank you, Michael, for these uh, suggestions. Um, let us think about uh, marking whether that is uh, for beginners, um, medium level or advanced level of knowledge. Bahir, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, just uh, since we are uh, still discussing um, the, the structure of, um, of the meeting and the program, I think it's, um, um, it's, it's difficult to make the um, um, linkages between, um, you know, the main or focus sessions and, and the workshops. I mean, we haven't discussed the themes yet, and assuming that um, some uh, workshops will feed into uh, main sessions and then the other assumption that we can design, you know, each day to focus on uh, theme A or B, I think it's uh, pretty prem premature to, to do that. So I'd, I'd rather see this discussion uh, come up organically when we come to the uh, themes. One of the things that worked very well last year is that we had uh, a larger number of sub-themes which allowed for um, uh, people to uh, submit and to have the space to submit uh, workshops on different, uh, uh, different topics and issues. Um, and also the other thing that worked quite well was that the focus sessions, and I'd like to um, call them focus sessions rather than main sessions, they, the themes were very focused on, on, on certain topics and this helped um, make the discussions more focused and, and constructive. Um, so um, let's hold on the, the linkages until we come to uh, the themes. Uh, I'm also for, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I totally agree with um, those who are for uh, not reducing the number of workshops. I still see uh, the IGF, uh, it's, it's, it offers a huge opportunity for uh, participants from all over the world, including developing countries, to come and, and participate with workshops. Um, I also don't think we need to reduce the number of main sessions. Last year, as Virat said, we only had four main sessions. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not counting opening and closing and all this, uh, and I don't think we should go below four main sessions in four, um, in four days. Having sessions running in parallel has been, you know, uh, our challenge since the beginning, and I think uh, from, from, from last year, I think the, the participation in, in the main sessions, at least the three that I attended, and in other workshops, um, participation was quite, uh, quite good. The last point, um, I'm, um, I'm for keeping the, um, the um, high-level meeting uh, uh, to uh, take place on day zero. Uh, perhaps one thing we would, um, uh, though I'm not sure whether it's MAG or it's the host country, but I think the format um, uh, of, of this meeting uh, may uh, need to be rethought um, uh, so that it does not look like the opening ceremony. So uh, just to, to make sure that it, it has its, its theme or themes and also it has uh, a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, format. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, I would like now to uh, suggest that we go beyond uh, the structure and the uh, preparatory process. Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I don't. You didn't speak, but let let me uh, sort of open up for next topic, and then you will be first to speak. And my apologies, I really omitted your name on the on the list. Um, uh, let me suggest that we open up now and uh, go beyond talking about um, uh, structure uh, and preparatory process. What I what I heard and uh, is that we would we would. Uh, follow sort of logic of maximizing the engagement with participants and uh, would not try to limit artificially um, sort of uh, expression. Uh, it means that we would go for maxim maximum possible number of workshops in parallel, in parallel with the main or focus sessions that we would organize. We would try to minimize the uh, time when uh, only one session in, is in uh, uh, motion, 
that is plenary, uh, but of course there are unavoidable things, like uh, op opening is unavoidable, and that, that should be uh, only, only um, uh, one and nothing in parallel. Also, uh, the uh, day zero uh, planning uh, seems to me should be more uh, transparent and MAG should be more informed. And uh, definitely the substance that we are now uh, starting to talk will influence the form. Uh, talking about the beginning uh, of the, of the uh, work uh, every day, um, the, it is very appealing to, uh, to go on the beach in the morning, but what, what Hartmut didn't say, that sun is rising, uh, I think, at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. And uh, if we start maybe not at 9, but start at 10, there will be still time to go to the beach and, and enjoy the, the, uh, the, the uh, sort of um, uh, environment, uh, but still go, go to, the, to the Congress Center and uh, uh, do our work. We also need to factor in that part of the uh, IGF is a social events that usually take place in the evening. And if we end up too late, so then we basically eliminate possibility of reaching out uh, through social events like receptions and dinners and uh, what, what is integral part of the, of, of the IGF. So, um, and also since the uh, Congress Center is in driving distance from hotels, the time which we will use going to and from uh, also will, will need to be factored in in our planning. So uh, let us maybe stop, stop uh, for the moment that we will not start at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, but we will not, go, uh, we will not start at 12. Uh, let's look at somewhere in, in, in between uh, and uh, come up with, with a uh, sort of a proposal based also on log logistical considerations uh, sometime in January. That will not influence in any way uh, substantive preparations. Uh, all that will kind of uh, uh, come together nicely. Uh, please now uh, let's talk us about uh, themes, sub-themes, uh, intercessional uh, work on best practices. What would be those uh, best practices that we would address during uh, intercessional time through engagement with experts and, and uh, community? And, uh, but of course, you can still continue addressing also substantive issues. On my list for the, for the moment is Arnold, Mark, Amelia, Isan, in that order, and then you're, you're on the list afterwards. Please, Arnold. Thank you, Chair. My name is Arnold van Rijn. I represent the Dutch government as well as our national uh, IGF. I would like to make a, a structure-related uh, comment. You can even call it a theme-related uh, remark. It's all about improving the interaction between the uh, national, regional IGFs and the global IGF. We see the amount of national IGFs is growing, and that's good news. However, they are acting independently. And there are countries who don't have a national IGF and would like to set up one. So my proposal is to uh, find a slot in the program where the organizers of national and regional IGFs, as well as the secretariat of the IGF can meet, where they can share best practices, where they can learn from each other, where countries who don't have a national IGF can also learn how to set up one, and I think, in my view, that uh, this should help to create a better interaction um, between the national and regional uh, IGFs as well as the Secretariat of the, uh, the Global IGF. This is my proposal. And my last comment relates to the intercessional work. Lots have been said about that. Uh, I heard very clear the uh, remarks made by ISOC, and we fully support that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, we could also consider using an online platform through perhaps the website of uh, the uh, Secretariat of the IGF. Thank you very much. 
So thank you, Arnold, for your uh, proposal. I think that this year we had, I mean, in Istanbul, we had uh, a session for national regional IGFs, coordination session, exchange of information. Uh, that uh, might be repeated also next year. Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Mark Carvo, United Kingdom Government. Uh, a couple of comments on uh, structure and, uh, and theme, themes, main themes. Um, first of all, uh, on structure, while I'm very sympathetic uh, to the desire to clear space for main sessions in order to ensure uh, it's easier to navigate the program and maximize participation, I, I, I simply don't think it's possible to do that. And uh, comments were made earlier about um, how, in fact, um, the experience of Istanbul showed that uh, it, it, it is possible to um, conduct well-attended main sessions when there are um, parallel uh, workshops in, in train. But there are a few factors which I, I think uh, simply um, argue against trying to achieve that separation of workshops and main sessions. First of all, I uh, very, very much agree with what you have uh, summarized, Chair, in terms of the desirability of maximizing uh, workshop uh, proposals. That's the very essence of the IGF in enriching uh, the event and uh, validating its uh, bottom-up process. We should not uh, constrain the opportunities for uh, proposals. What the MAG should do is look at refining options for conducting those workshops in order to accommodate as many as possible you know, different types of sessions, maybe shorter sessions, flash sessions and so on, the kind of things we've considered before. Um, secondly, um, we haven't talked about emerging issues and I think we do need to allow space in the IGF program for consideration of emerging issues. Uh, this is uh, a key objective for the IGF in, in our view. And of course, if we need to look beyond the 2015 IGF in terms of intersessional work leading up to 2016. And uh, emerging issues dialogue will help um, identify the program of intersessional activity after uh, Johan uh, Pethau. Um, thirdly, a uh, reminder that net neutrality discussion was not concluded in Istanbul. Um, we, uh, we undertook as, an, as, a, as a community to ensure that discussions would continue up to the 2015 IGF on net neutrality. So that, I think, should uh, be considered as a, as a sub-theme uh, for um, Jan Pasau. Um, fourthly, we talked about, um, or I raised certainly, uh, the importance of uh, placing dynamic coalitions work in, in the IGF program uh, and uh, the extent to which they will be providing concrete outputs. I, I note what Marilyn Cade said, and, and I'm, I tried to, to make clear that. Um, the MAG should take account of progress with the more active uh, dynamic coalitions in determining how we uh, place um, dynamic coalitions work in, in, in the IGF um, program for Yana Pasau. Um, fifthly, we need to allow time for reporting into uh, the IGF next year on the intersessional work. So that again mitigates the, the, the time available for clearing space. We have to allow the opportunity for reviewing the progress of the intersessional work. So we shouldn't uh, lose sight, sight of that. Um, I agree with the comments about uh, uh, the um, uh, opportunity for ministers and uh, industry leaders and so on uh, to speak at the opening uh, of, of the IGF, not at the conclusion for the reasons that have been uh, well advanced uh, previously. With regard to the um, pre-IGF high-level meeting, that is very much for the host country. Uh, I don't think it's our job really to preempt uh, national level discussions in Brazil about the conduct of the high-level high level meeting. On uh, main theme, I think uh, we should start to consider uh, gravitating towards a theme relating to sustainable development. This would intersect with uh, 
the WISIS review and the transition to uh, sustainable development goals and the role of the digital economy in uh, advancing uh, and securing uh, goals and objectives relating sus to sustainable development. So I, I would put on the table, first of all, that as a key theme for uh, Jarno Passau, uh, the contribution of the digital economy or the internet to sustainable development. And then we have some uh, related sub-themes uh, uh, according to that overarching uh, theme and objective. Um, so those, those are my thoughts on, on main theme. I hope that's a helpful start to the discussion. Look forward to hearing what others have to say. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much, uh, Mark. Uh, I also would like to uh, uh, remind that uh, Susan, uh, Susan uh, made a proposal uh, that we consider this time adding tags uh, to the workshops uh, instead of sub-teams. That was her proposal. I referred to her email. You can, you can uh, reread it. Uh, as her contribution since she couldn't participate here in, in the meeting. So next is uh, Amelia. Yeah, um, thank you, Chair. So um, my name is Amelia. Um, I've been a member of the European Parliament, and so I would like to agree with a point that was raised by a previous speaker that uh, we need to know the purpose of what we're discussing. Like, what are the internet governance issues that are relevant for um, to bring up in thematic discussions at the Internet Governance Forum. Um, and so I believe one of the reasons that uh, the Internet Governance Forum came into being was because there is um, hesitation about standardization in ICT. Who is responsible for this? What are the values that are put behind standards? Uh, we have had a European situation very recently with domain names, which is clearly an Internet governance issue, but where one member state felt that some of the international processes were not sufficiently taking into account their political concerns. And so I think focusing our discussions and themes towards this type of policy issue is useful. Um, as for proposing what themes are useful to bring up now, we know that copyright affects greatly the economic setting in which uh, technologies are being developed. We have important revising procedures in both the European Union and in the United States. There is also a lot of intensive discussions at the United Nations about how we um, introduce better exceptions and limitations, other things like this. I think it could be highly relevant to focus at least part of the efforts at the Internet Governance Forum into this discussion of the interaction between that type of legal framework and the setting in which internet technology standardization is being made. There is other legislation that also affects the way that technical standards are developed, namely in the fields of surveillance, data protection. Uh, I think it is something a lot of nations are now concerned about, and I think it's something that a lot of businesses and civil society organizations are also concerned about. So tying legislative processes and how they impact um, standardization organizations or do not impact standardization organizations, as it were, I think would be a useful um, path for the MAG to explore when it continues on, on to making a schedule for the um, ultimate event. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Amelia, for those proposals. Um, maybe slight, slight clarification. We're, we're uh, talking uh, not about every specific item that uh, should be addressed during the IGF, and they will be addressed. They will be proposed in different workshops and, and, or panels or whatever. We're talking now about the theme, the overarching themes, how we would sort of, uh, what focus we would put to the, um, uh, to this year's gathering, I mean, 15 years gathering. Uh, the proposal was made that it should be linked to uh, sustainable development, uh, but without specific uh, sort of suggestion in, in the um, uh, reaching out uh, and asking for comments, we got a uh, proposal uh, for the overarching theme, Internet Governance for Sustainable Development and Promotion of Human Rights. So that, that was suggested by, by um, uh, uh, a community who, or somebody from community who commented. Uh, and uh, so the, the usually we have had either four, or uh, until recently we had uh, four sub-themes. 
uh, those were uh, uh, called very simply access, openness, diversity, and security as a sub-themes of the main theme. And uh, last year, we couldn't agree. We wanted to depart from those traditional four sub-themes. Uh, we couldn't agree, and then we, uh, at the end, we had eight uh, different sub-themes. Uh, so again, today, we, we, we need to just to, to, to give some thought uh, how we would like to proceed uh, for, uh, for next year. And please remember, there's also a proposal for tags uh, that was uh, put forward by, by Susan. Tag question was already on the table uh, in the preparation of Istanbul meeting. At that time, we, we felt uh, some uh, un unease with, with that proposal, but uh, maybe now we are uh, uh, better suited. Isan, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I would like to give uh, some examples on uh, how uh, we need to consider uh, several ministries uh, into the uh, internal governance uh, uh, form and uh, its uh, workings. I'll just few examples, you know, just one of them is, for instance, Child Online Protection Act. And for instance, we have a ministry that's called Ministry of Transport, Maritime Affairs and Communications that deals with the internet policies. On the other hand, we have the ministry called Ministry for Family, Child and Social Policies. It is not neither one of, it is both need to use their expertise in, the, uh, in, this, uh, in this processes. And uh, of course, another example would be education, internet on uh, education. Uh, again, Ministry of uh, Education has to get involved in the policy making uh, part of that uh, issue. And uh, so you, we cannot just limit only one ministry into the internet uh, policies. Uh, on the other hand, I, I can also talk about uh, the main and focus sessions that are very important, especially for the newcomers. If they have no clue about uh, how internet IGF is working, they tend to go to the main session to understand what's going on. So uh, it is also guidance for many newcomers or many people are not so familiar with uh, all details of internet governance uh, procedures. Uh, so I think uh, we have to keep them uh, uh, available uh, for their access. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much. Um, so I have follow, following MAG members uh, on my list, Sh Cheryl, Anna, uh, Arnold already spoke, uh, Juan Alfonso, Michael, Robert, Virat, Hossam, Jandir. Uh, so uh, please, those who I mentioned, you can put, put down your, your flags that I can see those who, who want to, uh, okay. Thank you. So let me, let me uh, turn now uh, to Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I want to say that I like very much Mark's idea of uh, sustainable development as an overarching theme. I think that that would be a strong candidate. I also think that for sub-theme, um, it would be important to also include access this year. And I'd like to ask the MAG to consider um, ha kind of shining a light on internet access for the special needs community. I think the internet has enabled people with dis disabilities in many different ways. Uh, the UK Office of Disability Issues recently listed that more than there are more than 10 million people living in the UK with either a long-term illness, impairment, or disability. And access has really enabled them to become independent. And the online space has become a space for them without barriers. And so I'm not sure exactly how we might bring it up. I don't know if it would, could be a, a candidate for a best practice session or for uh, further work in some way, but I think it would be good for us to consider this uh, issue this year in a, in a 
more prominent way than we have in past years. Thank you. So thank you, Cheryl, for proposals. Anna? Uh, thank you very much. Well, I, I totally concur with Cheryl's comments. Um, and moreover, uh, I think that adding tax, it's a very good idea as well. I think that the, the time is right to, to do that, um, and we should do that. Um, on the main theme, I think that we should include uh, people. So we should find a way to include people, because until now we never did that. And uh, I think that we have to go uh, through this way. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, I think that all we do, we do for people. That, that goes without saying. Uh, yeah, we need to, to find maybe the, the way uh, human rights, mentioning human rights is for people. So, but we will, we will come to that. Uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, Most probably we would need to, to do the brainstorming on possible uh, themes or, or how we formulate the theme if we can agree uh, that that should be linked to sustainable development um, uh, in, in general. But uh, we're not yet there. Uh, Juan Alfonso, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, what I talked uh, earlier about themes, now I, you call it sub-themes. But I also have been listening very carefully to the proposals, and I'm beginning to have an idea of my preference, and I will put it to you. I think that each day we will have, we, sh we should need to have each day one theme, or you call it a sub-theme. And all the workshops in, in the morning or in the earliest part of the day related to that theme, and then a plenary in which all those results will come there. So in this sense, we can have at least uh, two or three themes, or sub-themes, as you call. I will talk about my proposal about those two themes. So I, I think that what you call the overall uh, theme or, or the title, I call it the title or the lemma of the conference, uh, should be a broader one so uh, the themes could co come in, inside. I was thinking that, you know, remember the definition of Internet governance. You know, it has two parts. One part is the process and principles, and that, that has been discussed elsewhere. But the other part is very interesting that it says, shared principle norm rules, decision-making procedures and programs that shape the evolution and use of the Internet. I would propose humbly to you to consider to say 200, uh, two, 2015 Internet Governor Forum shaping the evolution and use of the Internet. And now I will propose the themes. I, I said before that I thought before in two themes, but the third that was proposed about um, sustainable development, I think it's a good thing. I think that thing could be in the last day, the sustainable development, and all the worship could access is part of sustainable development. Access and all that that we don't can be there. But for the first two sub-themes, or themes, I told before that I think this should be an IGF that has impact. So we should concentrate because this, this is the most important policy d discussion place in which everybody discusses, you know? So I think that we should concentrate in those things that are really the concerns, not only of users, governments, enterprises, everybody related to the Internet. The first, without any doubt, is what is uh, related with what is called cybersecurity, cyber conflict, and all that. In order to, to illustrate that, this year has been many events regarding that. The United Nations Institute in Disarmament Research had a, a seminar this year. Also, ECOSOC has had a, a special event on implementing the post-2015 development agenda, enhancing access and security of ICT, that some of the present here were in that uh, event earlier. Also, the General Assembly in the first committee is constantly discussing this. So this subject, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's a place of concern. There, even the cyber conflict and all that, we should all, because we represent here the real constituency of the people who likes and, and loves internet and want internet to be good for, for, for good of the, of the mankind. 
we have to ensure that Internet should be a place of peace. It should not be a place of conflict. It should not be a place for, where terrorists do cyber, cyber crime and all that. I can give you details. This is not fantasy. I, I, I can give you details exactly of how many cyber attacks have been uh, Cuba, for instance, been subject, and some of those cyber attacks are for taking control of computers in our IP space to attack third countries, military and civilian installation. Can you imagine the danger of that? Is that the Internet that we want? No. We want an Internet of peace. So I think that that should be a theme and should have a lot of workshop around that. The second theme that I think is important is Internet economy. Many ac academics and, and writers agree that the Internet economy is in its infancy, and that allows a lot of distortions. By the way, net neutrality is, a problem, is a, an economy distortion in a particular country, but there's some other dis distortion and problem. You know all this problem about taxing. You know, Internet, uh, for instance, this should be very dear to the host country, Brazil. We, we in Latin America, we host every year these FRIDA awards in which we give awards to the best projects of the Internet. But you know, all those awards have to be funded with donations or with grants. So it's a paradox that Internet that has a vibrant economy cannot have some of those resources to fund the, the projects that are not, that, that should be free, access free, but it cannot be funded. And some of these projects, when the fund dies, it, it dies. That's why uh, innovative things are, are emerging, like crowdfunding and all that. I think all the economy should be a track and one day devoted to the economy, taxing, uh, all the things. Everybody ha can, can talk about uh, economy. And the third uh, chairman could be uh, sustained development as a sort of closing of all that, because all that is needed for, for, for that. So I propose. I will repeat, an overall lemma is IGF or Joao Pesao IGF shaping the evolution on the use, how it says? So, Juan, Juan, Juan Alfonso, okay. we, we heard and, all. And the three themes is cyber or cyber, cyber security. security, you know, that's a different names. Internet the other economy, one, economy sustainable development. and uh, we, sustainable we development. We listen, you, we Thank follow you. you. <laughs> So thank you very much for your proposals. Um, let me, let me uh, maybe explain. Uh, we have been through this uh, already. Uh, the, the problem of having one theme per day is that uh, there might be people who are not interested in that particular theme. And those, uh, those people then will go to the beach. We don't want. We want them to be with us uh, and maximize uh, their presence uh, and uh, do explorations. So uh, we, we can think of organizing kind of a log logical sequence of workshops that would uh, lead to the main, uh, main uh, event of the day at the end of the day, main uh, sort of uh, discussion, uh, but without limiting uh, other topics being discussed during that day uh, in other parallel workshops. Uh, what you said, shape, shaping uh, the Internet, it, it sounds very good to me as a motto. Maybe we could, we could decide and propose that IGF has a motto, which says uh, and that would be permanent motto, I, I, IGF, shaping Internet for the future or, or uh, whatever we decide. Uh, and and on, on, on sub-teams, uh, so thank you very much. They are, they are very much like we had. We had uh, uh, security. As a, as a theme, uh, access with basically was economic driver uh, and, and diversity openness uh, that has been already uh, a long time on the table. So, but thank you for your proposals. Michael, you are next on the list. Thank you very much. Um, I know it's very difficult to pick an overarching theme that makes everyone happy, and as a result, over the last few years, we've had very broad and, I think, quite generic themes. I, I hope we can do a little better this year, and we can really focus attention on the big changes that have happened over the last 12 months and will continue over the next 12 months. Uh, the theme I have in mind is, is a broad one, but a specific, it, it's specific enough to get people excited. And it goes something like this, building a trustworthy network or building a trustworthy net. This focuses not just on cybersecurity and privacy, 
but it would also talk about reliability. It would talk about some of the most important things that are happening without people even noticing, which is that companies who are running the Internet are putting in place much stronger encryption. This is leading to huge debates between law enforcement and the network providers, and in governments are involved in these debates. We also have this whole question of misinformation and how do we counter some of the hate speech and the material that's being disseminated online and causing people to join Islamic State by the thousands. There's a lot of issues around trust, but I, I think this is the big hot new issue. Uh, development's a great sub-theme, but it's an issue we've talked about for almost since the beginning of IGF. Same thing with um, economic impacts. Trust is really important here, and I think the other thing that we could weave into it that we haven't talked much about is trust for conflict avoidance. And tr a trusted network that gets people sharing information and dispelling some of the rumors that lead to conflict and war, th that, that's another issue we haven't talked about. But again, that doesn't happen unless we have trust. So uh, again, this is, this is a proposal. We can f wordsmith it, but I think building a trustworthy net would, would excite a lot of people. It would bring in a lot of uh, ministers that haven't come to these meetings in the past, and also a lot of companies like the banks and um, some of the, uh, even the defense companies that haven't been part of this discussion. What about building trustworthy net for sustainable development? Uh, as a proposal. Uh, the next speaker on my list is Robert, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, dear colleagues. I think that the um, that next IGF could be paid more attention for successful regional uh, experience of uh, different stakeholders. We need to find the best solutions, uh, uniting, not dividing us. As a representative uh, of GAF uh, Parliament sector, I want to propose to include in the agenda of the next IGF uh, question about the development of legislation in the Internet sphere. As international space and within the framework of uh, local experience uh, in different countries. This topic is not uh, about the technical infrastructure, not about ICANN and IANA, but it's something that is important today, for my opinion. This is a question about the future of the Internet, because the laws in different countries are not harmonized uh, among themselves, and some of uh, them reduce the freedom or to disseminate information. On the other hand, we see that human rights of, uh, on the Internet are not protected by law, but users need it. Billions of users around the world need protection. We have the big danger is the fragmentation of the Internet. Now it's much more important than in the past because we have no international law. There is no universal rules for the universal space. But we need it. In my opinion, we need something that will really work in the international space and not illusory principles and suggestions in the hope of awareness of various governments. And when the parliaments of different countries try to protect their citizens, it often happens that they destroy the Internet, break it into pieces. And I think that our mission in this situation to protect the Internet and save in its integrity. Thank you. So thank you very much, Robert, for this proposal. I, I think you raised a very important issue, and this issue has been discussed uh, through different workshops. I, I recall uh, there were a couple of uh, workshops on jurisdictional issues uh, in, in Istanbul, uh, but that, that does not sort of qualify for, for an overarching theme that we're, we're discussing. Security issues were mentioned. Security is much broader just the legislation. And that has been mentioned. But uh, thank you very much. This is an important, uh, important topic. Uh, we have one remote participant, but I will wait a little bit uh, and will invite first uh, Virat, then Hossam, and then uh, Izumi to take the floor. Uh, Virat, please. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought uh, so we sort of approach this um, subject of the theme in a slightly structured way. Just quickly for the, for the benefit of the House, we've had these themes 
running and sort of shows the sense that each MAG had invested in the theme since 2006, where in 2006 and 7, the theme that was retained was Internet Governance for Development. In 2008, it was Internet for All. In 2009, it became Internet Governance, Creating Opportunity for All. In 2010, IGF 2010, Developing the Future Together. 2011, Internet as a Catalyst for Change, Access, Development, Freedoms, and Innovation. In 2012, Internet Governance for Sustainable Human, Economic, and Social Development. And the last uh, uh, IGF was uh, had the theme of connecting continents for enhanced multi-stakeholder internet governance. So if we were to sort of look at this in the way the MAG has been invested in this, almost each of them have a very strong um, uh, developmental aspect to it. Uh, in fact, the first two just left it a development. If you had to qualify a theme, it should be action-oriented, hopefully concise. There are some long ones in here. Um, easy to communicate, especially this year, the, the, the tenth year. Uh, limited in sort of in terms of the, the words, aspirational, global in nature, and universally acceptable to all countries while taking into account different national realities, capabilities, and levels of development, etc., regarding the, and respecting the national policies. Uh, we're also fortunate to have the guidance of sub-themes. If you look at the eight sub-themes that we picked last year, they actually fit quite well in the four main sub-themes that have flown from, from the first uh, IGF. Access, openness, diversity, and security. The points made by some of my distinguished colleagues here is very important. Actually, the sub-themes find a way to accommodate all the concerns. If we can limit ourselves to four sub-themes, and these broad sub-themes seem to get almost all the points that we want to get in, then that will structure our workshops in a certain fashion. But given what we have done since 2006, given the fact that uh, we want to get a theme that closely matches the mandate of the Tunis agenda, what the ITU is currently pursuing, WISIS work, the UNESCO presentation made yesterday, um, some of the outcomes on the Net Mundial statement, and also the fact that New York will certainly put its weight behind the sustainable development goals. I think the, uh, the uh, proposal made uh, by Mark earlier about um, uh, internet governance for uh, sustainable development actually fits in quite well and flows away with all of these uh, qualifications that we, that we need and require. I would add, though, that the point uh, made by Anna about uh, introducing the human aspect to it, uh, even though it's all understood, if there's a way to do it innovatively, we can. But this, it seems, qualifies on many accounts, especially getting the attention in New York this year, which we need, by matching it with the sustainable <laughs> development goals. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, for your proposal and also uh, recalling the history of that. I, I see Michael wants to react, but I do not want to introduce that. We still have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, requests for the floor. But I will give you 20 seconds, Michael. I just wanted to indicate that uh, New York is very interested in development, but there's also growing interest in security issues in New York. And the recent resolutions on privacy and the like are, I think, an indication that we could help inform that debate as well as informing the debate about uh, uh, sustainability. So thank, thank you. Maybe, uh, again, uh, let's, let's collect more, more input. And uh, uh, next to my list is Hossam. Thank you, Sher. Uh, well, I have many points, but I'll try to be brief. Uh, first, regarding the theme itself, I might be I'm not be, I might not be the best one to phrase it, but I had a colleague who suggested enabling sustainable development with a trustworthy internet. Uh, so I'm just passing the info, if it works. Uh, but for me, and uh, as being from a developing country, uh, and I attended last IGF, participated in the last MAG, I think the one thing that we really need in many developing countries are policies 
related to um, enabling health, education, um, uh, um, um, uh, finance through the Internet. We have, uh, we lack legislation, proper legislation on this, and we, it takes too much time to find the proper one. And uh, if I go back to the proposal uh, suggested before by Virat and Cheryl about uh, uh, inter, uh, the next billion connected people uh, and having policies menus coming out of that, we wish to have policies menus related to uh, using the Internet to enable health, to enable education, to enable finance. So this is my two points. I have just a question regarding um, what uh, Hartman said earlier. He said the word negotiation. And I didn't know do we have negotiation on our IGF or not because it was, uh, it was like that. I, I don't know why. So this is just my comment. And still, uh, I, I just want to express uh, still our worries in many developing countries in Africa and Asia regarding still the cost of going to uh, the uh, resort. Uh, this is, I mean, going already to Sao Paulo or a main city is already expensive. Going to the resort is double the expense. So we need to think about that. Also the timing again, but you already covered this part, because in order to have at least our, the people in Africa and Asia be able to have an online participation, they need really to have a proper timing to participate. Thank you very much. So thank you, Hassam. Uh, in, in, we, we hear the concern, but also there is a, a counter argument is that um, hotel prices in uh, big cities uh, would be much higher than hotel prices in Joao Pessoa. Uh, and that would somehow compensate the additional expense for, for, for flights. I don't know whether that fully compensates, but still, that, that, that also should be uh, factored in. I will now take uh, the comment from online participant uh, Izumi. Itani Okutani. Um, I'm actually finding it hard to just uh, focus on one theme as I listen to others. And um, so, so far, um, I like the um, idea of sustainable development. I also um, like the theme that was raised, uh, um, increasing our trust worth, uh, worthy in the internet. Um, and uh, with the second point, I feel um, in addition to the actual physical network um, element about network security, if there we can actually add some social implications such as uh, trust of networks, not only the physical network, but the trust between communities, trust between stakeholders. Um, I would be um, more, um, I can, I feel I can support it uh, even more. Well, thank, thank you very much uh, for uh, your comments. Uh, let me now uh, read out the list of uh, uh, speakers that have asked for the floor. Uh, Jandir, Slobodan, Murad, Jack, ICC bases and ISOC. Uh, I see Avery, and uh, for the moment, no, no one else. So thank you. Uh, Jandir, please. Thank you, Yanis, and uh, this is uh, Jandir Santos from the Brazilian government. And uh, we do have a concrete proposal for the main theme of the IGF Brazil next year. But uh, before I get to this concrete proposal, I would like to, to provide you with with some short comments on the rationale for, for this, this proposal. The, the first comment is that uh, we in Brazil, we are pretty much aware of the importance of this IGF uh, 2015. We are aware of the fact that it will take place in a very critical moment uh, towards the end of a negotiation process in New York that will decide, among other things, on the future of the IGF itself. So as we've been saying, we think it's critical uh, for the IGF to continue exploring ways of communicating, improving dialogue with the multi-stakeholder fora, in particular with the, with the UN, 
and because of the WISIS plus 10 uh, overall review process, but also in the context of the post-2015 development process, in the context of the sustainable development goals. This is, uh, this is the first comment. Uh, my second comment is that uh, we in Brazil, we also support the view that uh, while maintaining this, this key characteristic of being an open platform for discussion, the IGF should continue to develop more tangible outcomes. This is something we've been discussing, and uh, we do hope that the IGF Brazil can contribute to this evolution. This requires innovation, is an evolution. And my, my last comment is that uh, we, we in Brazil, we view that the Net Mundial Declaration uh, has already identified points that need better understanding and further discussion. And some of these points have already been mentioned here. N net neutrality, for instance, is one of them, but there are others. And uh, it is our wish that these points be further explored in the context of the IGF João Pessoa. So this will bring me to, the, to our concrete proposal, and I'll read it. And uh, our proposal will be advancing the Internet governance ecosystem from the net mundial outcomes towards sustainable development goals. And I'll read it again. It will be advancing the Internet governance ecosystem from the net mundial outcomes towards sustainable development goals. Thank you. So thank you very much. We have now a proposal from the host country. Uh, I would like to ask uh, others comment and react on, on that proposal. Uh, Next on my list is uh, Slobodan. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, I would like to, to, to basically second two proposals. Uh, the first one is uh, for the topic of uh, building trustworthy internet that Mike proposed. Uh, uh, as particularly relevant issue for technical community, uh, but as long as it includes the aspect of uh, how to move towards the internet on which we would not feel constantly tracked, profiled, uh, and tapped by both the corporations and state security agencies worldwide. Uh, the second proposal uh, is the one that Juan proposed uh, on Internet economy uh, that could include topics such as cross-border taxing, import tax procedures, financial transactions, including crowdfunding, consumer protections, etc. And uh, when we are uh, uh, at this topic, uh, we could also get practical uh, and include it uh, uh, as a team for the best practices forum, but uh, let's leave that uh, uh, for the time when we get to the best practices, uh, hopefully. And, uh, and just a small footnote, uh, I've sent an email to the MAG uh, uh, mailing list with a link to a service that could help us in uh, uh, visualizing time slots for IGF events across different time zones. Uh, because I think that uh, we should also, uh, apart from the valid concerns that you mentioned earlier, uh, we should also aim at arranging time for events uh, in such a way that maximizes the possibilities for remote participation. Thank you. Thank you, Slobodan. I, I think I, I invited MAG members also to uh, suggest themes for um, uh, best practices. If not, I, I wanted to mention that. Uh, I think we should not restrain ourselves because that is also a part, part of the uh, discussion on substance. So what would be those uh, topics that, that uh, we would want to address uh, during um, at the meeting and in the run-up to meeting and conclude our uh, conversation at the meeting? Uh, Murad is next on my list, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll make my intervention in French. Uh, il serait souhaitable euh, d'éviter de se focaliser sur euh, certains thèmes qui ont été largement débattus jusqu'à présent lors des précédentes éditions de l'IGF, euh, ce qui nous permettrait d'éviter euh, la redondance et en même temps pouvoir discuter de questions qui ont été jusque-là peu ou pas du tout discutées. Euh, concernant, euh, j'aimerais euh, proposer les thématiques suivantes. Euh, pour éventuellement les inclure dans le programme de l'UGF de Joa Pessoa. Premièrement, les objectifs du développement durable de l'après 2015 et comment l'UGF pourrait y contribuer. Deuxième thème, le pouvoir transformationnel de l'Internet et son impact sur notre vie de tous les jours. 
à ce sujet, certaines questions méritent d'être débattues comme l'Internet et la création de richesses. Est-ce que l'Internet favorise le statu quo en matière de euh, création de richesses ou bien participe-t-il à une meilleure et équitable répartition des richesses euh, Quels sont les acteurs économiques qui en bénéficient le plus Les entreprises, les consommateurs Comment les entreprises, les secteurs d'activité et les gouvernements peuvent maximiser les opportunités offertes par l'économie numérique. Troisième sujet que j'aimerais proposer, est celui euh, relatif au dernier développement concernant la sécurité du cyberespace. Enfin, euh, il me semble aussi important euh, euh, d'examiner la possibilité de prévoir un atelier qui permettrait aux spécialistes en relations internationales et autres sciences sociales euh, d'informer l'ensemble des parties prenantes de l'IGF sur les travaux de recherche qui, ont, qui, qui sont faits au niveau universitaire euh, mieux, mieux, euh, concernant la thématique de la gouvernance de l'Internet en général. Merci. So thank you very much for those proposals. Uh, and of course, what we need to do, we need to try to wrap them in very concise uh, headings. Uh, and all, all that you mentioned are very relevant topics uh, for conversation. I would like to ask, Sylvia, is you on, you are on, on in line? Okay, I will give you the floor. I, I was not sure whether you are in line or not. So let me move now to uh, uh, Jacques, and then Sylvia after. Thank you. Um, where are we? Um, I would like to propose for human rights to be one of the sub-theme for three reasons. One is that, um, as demonstrated through the numbers of um, workshop proposals that was actually um, workshop, workshop organized, uh, that was organized in 2014 this year, 47 of, uh, I think almost half of it was related to human rights to some extent. So this demonstrates both interest as well as relevance in this um, area of work. Um, secondly, um, there is also greater interest in other, human, other key institutions such as the Human Rights Council, Council of Europe, um, Freedom Online Coalition to take forward human rights dimensions of internet governance policy issues and IGF can um, play a really key role in facilitating inter-institutional um, com conversations and dialogues um, such as what took, place on, uh, uh, what took place this year around the um, uh, uh, conversations at IGF in putting into the Human Rights Council document on privacy in a digital age. Um, and um, the, the third reason um, is that it also provides a concrete framing to many intersect, uh, intersecting issues, for example, on, not just on civil and political rights, which will cover things like privacy and surveillance, and also um, around copyright as a mechanism for censorship, which was raised by um, Amelia earlier, but also things around economic, social, and cultural rights, um, which links very well and strongly to development issues, which I agree is very key um, from 2015 for various reasons. Um, so for that, I would like to um, re uh, strongly propose um, human rights to be a, 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 I would like to propose human rights to be a sub-theme. Um, and also, if possible, I would like to clarify a little bit about um, the, the structure that we proposed earlier because of the amount of uh, responses that came about that seemed to, 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 um, to show that we, they seem to understand our proposal as saying that main sessions will be at the exclusion of all other workshops. Um, that actually isn't what we were suggesting. We were thinking that there will be some main sessions or focus sessions that could benefit from a next steps discussion. So for example, like human rights, um, where all of the different um, workshop dialogues will feed into, the, into this kind of focus session. And of course, other, other, other sub-thematic sub track conversations as well as things like um, flash sessions and so on will, will can continue to happen. It's just that the workshops on a similar theme sh shouldn't be at the same time. So then it sort of defeats itself and it doesn't feed into the conversation. Um, and finally, for a best practice forum proposal in terms of a theme, I would like to suggest um, actually gender as one of the theme because it's also quite timely. Um, next year is also the Beijing Plus 20 review process 
where um, some of these discussions around um, promoting women in the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics will be discussed at the com Commission on the Status of Women. Um, it just view, and also, of course, um, post-2015 discussions will also bring in some of these intersectional issues around gender and ICT. Uh, and I think that, in a sense, it's also quite timely. It's one of the more uh, mature topics as well. So, um, yeah, thank you. So thank you very much. Um, uh, just a question. Are you sure that this is, uh, we will have enough material uh, for that uh, best practice on, on uh, uh, ICT and gender? I, uh, the idea of the, the compilation of best practices is to advise uh, how countries could improve situation by using, uh, by using the good examples and as far as I know, uh, even in uh, most developed countries, question how to attract young women to ICTs is still a puzzle. And uh, so from that perspective, with all respect to, to that, uh, the, my question is whether that theme is mature uh, for best practice compilations. Again, I'm just asking question. I'm not expecting answer. Uh, in the conversations, we need to clarify those, those things. Uh, Sylvia, please, you have the uh, floor now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think the team should include trustworthy internet and, and socioeconomic growth. These, these two concepts should be included, and in maybe the, the, the summary of this could be other one, but, uh, but it's important to explain that economic, socioeconomic growth is important. And I don't know if trustworthy internet would be enough to explain what we are meaning in, in this concept. Thank you. So thank you very much. ICC basis. So I will only just take, uh, can you hear me? Just one quick moment um, to mention that uh, we have a proposal uh, that I spoke of yesterday um, for a theme on intersessional. Uh, work that has been made available to the MAG and will be distributed so that people can see it and consider it in advance of the discussion. Actually, that would be time now to announce it because, uh, or that will be Cheryl who will announce it. Uh, we're going, we were going to post it for people's consideration. If Do you, do you want us to... to just. Well, I, I didn't want to jump the gun in, 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 in that topic if you're still on No, no, I mean, with, with intercessional, we, we, uh, I, th I think what I heard during the discussion, that intercessional work will be uh, devoted to developing best practices and uh, preparing documents, compilation of best practices on the themes that we need to uh, now define what they would be uh, throughout the intercessional period. So this is... Uh, what I heard from, from uh, our conversation before. Uh, we need to define those uh, best practice uh, topics that we would be uh, addressing in intersessionally, developing those, those compilations. And uh, I, I think from practical uh, respect, we should aim at uh, three, four, maybe maximum five uh, topics to, to be addressed as we did uh, in the run-up to Istanbul meeting. I don't think that going beyond five would be uh, reasonable because of the uh, resource limitations and so on. So therefore, uh, feel free to, to announce them as, uh, as, as you wish. Um, now or later? Okay, Cheryl, Cheryl is on my list. I will, I will let, let Cheryl speak. Um, Okay, let me, let me uh, come back to you once you're ready. Uh, ISOC, Thank please. You. ISOC, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, with regards to the overall theme, I think, um, I think including the idea of sustainable uh, development is, uh, is a good idea and will um, echo nicely in uh, New York as we prepare for WISIS 2015. Um, then I hear that uh, some colleagues are already proposing um, sub-themes. Um, I think human rights, trust, economic development, access, multi-stakeholder governance are uh, probably natural uh, themes. At the same time, as we think of future outcomes for the IGF um, and what we may be able to produce through the best practices, 
uh, but also uh, through the workshops and the dynamic coalitions, um, I would I would invite colleagues uh, to think about possibly organizing uh, clusters of sub themes um, and and thinking that if we have more specific sub themes, we will have better outcomes. Um, this uh, takes me to. Um, the, the necessity we've discussed of having intersessional work and probably identifying volunteers at the end of this week uh, to lead uh, thematic work and maybe that group of volunteers could work with the community on then identifying, fine-tuning themes for best practices, themes for workshops, um, and with the view, of course, of um, progressing towards uh, outcomes for the, for the final um, IGF week. Um, with regards to concrete proposals for the best practices, experience shows that, um, again, we need focus themes if we want to have a, a fruitful discussion. Uh, some of the 2014 themes could uh, uh, benefit from additional work. I'm thinking of the multi-stakeholder track uh, which uh, needs extra work uh, in, in my view. Some of them, I think, are complete. The spam and the certs one, certainly. Um, ideas for new themes uh, for the consideration of the group. Uh, best practices for developing IXPs. Uh, best practices uh, for managing identity online. Best practices for ethical data uh, handling. Um, and I'd, I'd be happy to put forward additional ideas if needed. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Constance, for very practical uh, suggestions. So I have uh, following uh, MAG members on my list. Avri, uh, Marilyn, Jivan, Virat, Cheryl, Marcus, Olga. Okay. And that is, ah, okay. We, we, okay. Um, so, uh, and also I would like to, uh, we have until 6 o'clock and I would like maybe to devote the last five minutes uh, for homework, meaning homework for you. <laughs> so please, uh, Avri. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the themes, over the last couple years, one of the issues I've always had is that these word salad themes have sort of ended up very confusing. They're, they're things that I've never quite been able to explain to anyone, even when I've remembered the correct juxtaposition of the words. So as we get into these, these multiple where we put everybody's words together to get to a theme, we get to things that, that, that I really don't comprehend and I can't explain and I can't even remember. So I think that we really should pull ourselves back and, and think about very simple. I mean, I'm not quite sure I understand why we need a, a grandiose cross-cutting theme name. And, and I would be happy with just something like, you know, uh, IGF Sapasal and, and leave it as something simple that, that says where we are and then we have all the rest of it but it's all about but the rest of the themes I just find maybe it's because I'm really quite simple when you get right down to it is I don't understand them thank you so I, I think all, all, of, all of us at the end of the day are very simple <laughs> and, uh, and all of us are just humans what about IGF on the beach, for instance? <laughs> well, more, more seriously, we don't have much time. We don't have much time uh, to, to crack jokes here. Marilyn, please. Marilyn has, she has disappeared. How come? So I will come back to Marilyn af afterwards. We, yes. No, then, 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 then she can write in, uh, send, send in writing. Um, Jivan, please. Well, uh, I would like to touch on uh, Avri's point on simplicity. And I also have a feeling that sometimes we get stuck into thinking of uh, UN uh, 
kind of catchphrases like uh, sustainable development and this and this and this and that and that, or marketing strategies, connecting the world and, and things like that. <coughs> but to touch on uh, what I was saying yesterday, that uh, we should think about a communication uh, outlook as well, but not only. We are here because we all love the Internet, and I think that something like celebrating the Internet can be a, a good one as well. Um, there, the internet doesn't really have a birthday, you know. Uh, you can't really say the TCP/IP was, you know, drafted then and and con and, or the World Wide Web does. But the whole of the internet doesn't really have a starting point. So we can really, we've never really stopped and celebrated the internet properly. I think in all all this time. So next year could be a good moment to show that. And if we show, you know, and then celebrating the internet can be adopted in many different ways. Celebrating the internet for sustainable development, celebrating the trustworthy internet. Each theme can it's have uh, an application within this celebrating the internet kind of uh, general theme or whatever. So and in terms of the New York uh, discussion, well, if New York sees that we uh, celebrate what we do, what we're here all about, then uh, they'll give us a chance to do it further. And uh, I think it's good enough. Cheers. Uh, so thank you uh, for your comment, Jivan. Uh, it's I mean we always spend a lot of time in trying to identify what would be those those um, phrases. And at the end of the day, uh, eight years in a row, we came, for instance, to conclusion that uh, four four uh, simple words: access, openness, security, and diversity would be the best uh, sort of. Uh, uh, representation of different different opinions. So last year we we did an extra work, and then we uh, conclude that we could not get uh, uh, simpler than that. So we ended up with eight. Uh, nevertheless, the overarching theme I think it's it's it is important because that uh, sort of uh, points to uh, certain either values or or importance that every country. Uh, attaches to to this event and uh, why why we're uh, uh, put putting um, uh, connecting continents because uh, Istanbul specifically is the city on both sides of of, of uh, uh, two continents so th there is a logic be behind that everybody understands that so all the rest of course is is a question of imagination sustainable development is the topic of 2015 in the world. It's not a topic, it is the topic. So as a result, it would be just wise for us to, to try to uh, point that we are part of that global conversation about sustainable development. Uh, but now Virat will be telling what he thinks about it. I was actually um, going to respond to your point about the best practice forums. Um, Please go ahead. Uh, first, I think. Uh, I support already the proposal that is yet to come from Cheryl that she's going to present in a moment. Um, and we put that through a tight test of what it should look like. And, and so I think that would, that would help to decide the themes. But I also uh, suggest that we, I think uh, Marcus in his comments yesterday had mentioned that this is work in progress. This is very good work that's been done last year. But I don't think it went beyond the three or four four months, I think, of, of engagement. Uh, I, I think the existing five themes that exist under best practices should continue. Uh, I don't believe we've finished those. So we should then pick themes in addition to that, maybe one or two at best, and actually focus our attention on international work on the existing themes that are already there. Um, I think uh, the two points about IXPs and um, managing entity that were mentioned. Uh, we, we should put anything that we picked through the test of is that, as you mentioned, Chair, is there sufficient material available for engagement and a set of parameters we might want to push this through. When the ICC basis document is presented, I think you will see a set of parameters that we try to put this, the themes through so that they can pass that test of what can become uh, intersessional work or best practice. So. In summary, I support the theme that ICC Basis will present. I also suggest that we continue the work on the five themes that we have and add maybe one at the best two because we're going to have a lot of work to do during the year. And on that, I, I support the IXPs 
uh, part that was mentioned by uh, a distinguished colleague, Constance. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Cheryl, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As Virat mentioned, uh, the business community, we spent some time thinking about what a good theme would be, how we would go about selecting a topic, not just for this IGF, but thinking in, in mind uh, for future IGFs as well. And the topic that we came up for, with for the intersessional work in 2015 was menu of policies for enabling the next billion online. And I'll repeat it in case I read it too fast. Menu of policies for enabling the next billion online. And so we created a chart um, and looked at the different sections of uh, paragraph 72 in the Tunis agenda and also kept in mind uh, the general over, overall sense of the MAG that we need to strengthen outputs of the IGF. And so we come, came up with the, this criteria for selecting a topic. So first, it needs to be a significant, globally unresolved, continuing developmental IG-related challenge. Second, it would need to enable a broad range of international cooperation amongst the internet governance community. Third, the topic would need to substantially enhance international best practices and experience sharing. The topic would also need to be a current challenge faced by developing countries, which also continues to be a global issue. The topic would need to ensure all multi-stakeholders can contribute substantively, but equally ensures ready availability of experts who are responsible for dealing with the issue during the course of the intersessional work and at the IGF meeting. The topic needs to be, uh, it needs to enable bottom-up country, country and regional IGF capacity building and contribution. The topic can be based on existing verifiable and credible evidence, data for the purposes of tracking progress across subsequent IGFs. The topic needs to allow international intergovernmental organizations to contribute substantively, including ITU, UNESCO, WSIS processes, etc. The topic needs to facilitate frank and free participation of all relevant stakeholders who can and will contribute without any hindrance in order to avoid a skewed discussion. The topic should connect to and advance other key internet governance work streams to the greatest extent possible, such as the IGF's best practice forums, WSIS, MDGs, and the NetMundial outcomes. The intersessional work should have a specific objective. More importantly, the effort should result in widely usable a widely usable output, which takes the form of best practices and allows for information sharing to strengthen IGF's knowledge agenda. The theme should help enhance visibility of and the substantive work being undertaken at the IGF, keeping in mind the IGF renewal discussions in December 2015. And finally, the topic should go beyond internet and telecom objectives to address broader issues such as empowerments, especially for vulnerable and marginalized sections, improve opportunities for social and financial well-being, and support complex objectives such as poverty eradication. Those are the criteria. Um, I would be happy to post the document to the MAG list if that would be helpful. Um, I don't know if we're past that point or not, but uh, whatever would be useful, uh, I'm happy to do. Thank you. Yeah, no, please, please do, because that, that is an important contribution to our conversation and a very concrete uh, and well-developed proposal. Uh, I have uh, another six requests for the floor, and I hope that we can accommodate them. Uh, Marcus, Olga, Aida, Lee, Peter, and Kosi. And uh, so we will see how far we will get in terms of timing, because as I said, I mentioned want to uh, keep another five minutes uh, at the end. Uh, Marcus, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a few words on the best practices and pick up on what you said and also on what Virat uh, said and others uh, I definitely uh, think uh, there is merit in continuing at least some of the best practices forum we had this year and I would strongly recommend uh, taking forward uh, those on spam and on C certs. Uh, the work on spam actually revealed that what many of us thought was a problem that had been solved actually is much deeper and uh, the group came forward with very good suggestion for deepening this work. Uh, I also agree with you, Chairman, that uh, maybe more than five uh, could be rather challenging 
or six maybe, but we have to be uh, careful not to overload the boat. And I would also uh, ask the question whether maybe not all the themes are, or the format is maybe not best suited for all the themes we had tried to tackle. Uh, gender was mentioned as a theme and you asked the question and I would tend to agree with you, but at the same time it is an important issue uh, which should maybe uh, we could consider tackling the theme in another format. Uh, it could be tackled as intersessional work, but maybe not as a best practice forum. I also wonder whether the multi-stakeholder thread lends itself that well to a best practice forum. As the discussion this time round has showed, it was a more a theoretical level, almost philosophical. And it is important that this discussion is carried forward by the IGF, but maybe it could be also a slightly different uh, format could be used for having this issue. And I would also strongly support including IXPs. This is a very narrowly focused theme where we do have results we can show and document and which would be very much in the spirit of the best practices format. Thanks. So thank you, Marcus. Just one question of clarification. Uh, when, when you spoke about continuation working on spam and CERT, C certs, uh, I, I think that um, I understood from Constance that uh, th those were the most mature documents uh, that we could uh, discontinue working on them and present them as a sort of finalized at this point in time. Or, or uh, did I misunderstand? Well, I agree that the documents uh, that have been presented are definitely the most mature ones after this year's session, and they, there's a lot of merit in the documents as standalone documents, but at the same time, they do point to further work and they make suggestions for further work, and I hold the view that there would be merit pursuing this work. And uh, as Virat said, there may also be merit in pursuing the work of the other best practice forums, but uh, this is something the MAG may wish to consider, and I would also uh, put forward the suggestion that maybe in a slightly different format, maybe also less labor intensive and could be more of a discussion forum, not so much as documenting uh, practices, but more having a free ranging discussion on some of these issues which are important to the MAG for sure. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um for those comments. Um, I will now call on Olga. Thank you, Chair. Um, I do agree that sustainable development is a main major issue, and there is no sustainable development, especially for developing countries, if we don't have trained people, especially in technology. So I would support the best practice, this proposal of the best practice forum on gender and ICTs, and responding to your question, if there is enough material, I can tell you, uh, yes, I've been working on that for many, many years at the regional and global level. Uh, we also uh, are partner with UNESCO at uh, Latin America level to enhance that, and we are working on specific materials to promote that. We think it's a relevant issue to have more uh, people that can handle technology in developing countries, which is uh, critical because then when we train people, they go to work uh, to developed countries where they get more money. So we need more people to develop our own economy. So I would support that, and I think it's a very important issue. Thank you. So thank, you thank you very much. Uh, Aida. Thank you. So I would also uh, briefly like to let you know that there is more than enough materials for best practice on gender and ICT, and I can only speak now for Southeast Europe region where we have so many amazing, amazing examples like in Bosnia and Herzegovina we are focusing on ex-Yugoslav countries with a discotheque event uh, that is gathering uh, successful women in ICT, then Women Rock IT, which was happening as a small event, and now it is becoming regional and gathering around 15, uh, 50 women dealing with ICT and human rights, etc. Uh, so there are really many examples. So please, uh, 
let's not forget also the amazing global Take Back the Tech campaign that was just recently acknowledged with UN Women and ITU Award as the best possible example on gender and ICT. Uh, so yeah, I completely support suggestion uh, made by Jack. Uh, this will also provide guidance and be very helpful to address the gender gap issues that is present in the field of IG and policy. And of course, uh, for the record, I would also like to express my support for human rights as a sub team. So thank you very much, um, Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Lee Hibbard from the Council of Europe. Um, I wanted just to concur with Avery uh, regarding the overarching theme, which is that uh, often I find uh, with IGFs that there is, um, they're rather long, these titles, and, and very hard to, to recall. Uh, so something shorter and more punchy may be something to, one could recall more easily. Um, and perhaps using new words, words we haven't used before in previous titles. So I'll give it a go. Internet governance um, for peace, prosperity, and trust. Peace would, would cover the scaling attacks that we've he heard about, prosperity for, for economic prosperity, but also for sustainable development, perhaps, and trust for obvious reasons. So it's something short. It may, it may, it may be interesting for you. Um, I'd also like to recall the chair summary of 2014, uh, which talks about from dialogue to action. So there is some continuum that we need to uh, uh, reflect upon from 2014 to 2015. You've discussed it in different ways, n national and regional IGFs, um, best practice forums, human rights, uh, etc., digital trust, even youth. I think we should try to reflect that in the sub-themes sub too, because that would show uh, you know, a continuity with the last, the last IGF. And one, one last point, which I'd like to, to, to refer back to the Russian um, Federation speaker, which is that the question of law is something which is very important and, and inescapable, because uh, whether you like it or not, Internet is a space of freedom, but it's also a space for the rule of law, some would say. So um, is it worth thinking about the question of you know, how can, what can the law or legislation achieve regarding, regarding the protection of the Internet or freedom? Uh, is that a, a, you know, an important theme or issue needs, which needs to be addressed? Thank you. So thank you very much, Lee, for your uh, suggestion. I think the colleagues will uh, reflect on it. Uh, Peter? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Peter Dengate Thrush. Uh, what I, as an incoming member, are listening for and haven't yet heard really is the sort of strategic policy behind this discussion. Um, I think we've heard some complaints which are very resonating with me from Avery about the word salad, and I have a great deal of sympathy with my colleague from Cuba. Uh, sessions that I've been to also have seemed to have strayed around the issues, and it's difficult to, to tell whether it's about something new that's happening on the internet or something that's got to do with governance. And Mike's tweet uh, from the earlier session is the same, what is all this about? And so what I think we need to do first is work out why we want a theme. And one of the points of a theme is to identify what's not going to be talked about. And that might be an easier discussion to have. Unless we decide that a theme is in fact not going to be used as a strategic goal, it's not going to be a limiting or guiding strategic tool, it's simply just going to be an umbrella under which everyone can find a home for their own particular topic. So I think that's the first approach. Is a theme going to be the guiding strategic directing tool for the construction then of the workshops? The the, because it has all those advantages if you go that way. Um, I just made some notes. It sets strategic direction. It helps evaluate incoming proposals. Do they support the theme? Are they outside the theme? Once they've been done, you can evaluate whether they were successful in supporting the theme. Uh, it has the other advantages that other people have talked about, marketing, benefits, uh, communications. Never forget that we have to attract people to these seminars. Uh, they need to go to their bosses and explain why they need leave and funding. If there's a theme and there's a clear direction and a strategic goal and a program constructed around that, that helps all of that. So I think the strategic decision comes first. Rather than people floating actual ideas, why do we want a theme? Is it going to be a guiding principle or is it simply just an umbrella title that's going to look good once or twice but actually isn't going to be used um, as, a, as a tool? I, my preference obviously is for a limiting, strategically conceived theme with sub-themes that also support it but that necessarily means excluding some topics. 
I, I think that the, this is a, a very sort of right uh, approach, to, and this is what we are trying to, uh, to pursue, uh, to identify what uh, direction the discussion will go. The problem is that uh, uh, historically uh, the MAG never wanted to sort of narrow discussion and point to one particular narrow theme. Therefore, uh, the sub-themes, for instance, the, the overarching theme always has been uh, linked either with a sort of actual political uh, event or, or uh, sort of process or something with the link with the uh, host country. At the same time, uh, sub-themes indicated uh, which direction uh, the discussion should go during the workshops. Um, if we identify or formulate sub-themes very narrowly, so then we limit the, the, the broadness of discussion because uh, then one of the evaluation criteria is how the proposed workshop fit in one of the sub-themes. And then uh, if that does not fit, Technically, we need to reject that workshop, and uh, so we are automatically narrowing down. You know, this, this is the search for the balance between strategic direction and the uh, wideness and richness of discussion. Uh, I, I have uh, two more. Uh, sorry, so I have one one from. Um, Izumi is waiting a long time. We have, we're running out of time. I, I need to uh, give uh, two more uh, works. Izumi, please, very briefly, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. So as a possible topic for best practices, um, I would like to raise IPv4 to IPv6 transition as a possible candidate, if there is room to add. I recall this was one of the issues raised in Kusan, so it might be good to cover. And I also think the IXP are best practices is a good idea. I agree with Virat's comment about continuing with the themes covered in 2014 to add continuity to the work, unless there are topics regarded as not necessary to continue. And on the best practice on the multi-stakeholder um, uh, mechanism, I agree with Marcus's uh, observation that it was more conceptual this time. So perhaps um, this will fit in well better with sharing best practices on existing community building and just uh, reshape a little bit. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Fiona? Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, just a couple of observations. and starting to build off what Peter was suggesting, it might be useful to have a conversation about what exactly we want to do with the theme. And then from that, it helps figure out exactly the options. Um, and perhaps there's a way to do some of this online this evening and have a back and forth or an exchange on, on the mag list or even a doodle poll about which ones people prefer. Um, but in terms of the idea of best practices and gender issues, um, I'd be very supportive of raising the issue of gender and, and women, more women in, gen, in ICT issues in the context of the IGF. I don't think it's something that's happened in the nine-year history so far of the IGF. And I think that's why folks are sort of questioning the best practices and the breadth of material. Um, I think the best practices thus far have um, fallen from many of the workshops and many of the things that have happened. So I think that may be some of the reaction you're hearing from people here. But I would also like to point out that I just spent three weeks in Korea um, debating some of these issues, and it took us two weeks to get an institution to agree to have an aim of gender diversity. So I would, I would not think, like you all to think that it's that set in terms of importance. So if you want to make it an important issue, which I'd be very supportive of, I don't know that doing best practices is the only way or the best way to do it. So I would consider looking at other options in addition to that. So thank you very much. Uh, I will now ask uh, Carolina Aguera, who is uh, listening from distance, to contribute to discussion. But very briefly, please, Carolina. Seems we have a problem with the connection. Kosi, then I'm going to you, and we'll see if Carolina can, can be after you. Merci beaucoup, President. Je voudrais proposer une formulation pour le thème central, la gouvernance de l'Internet pour le développement durable et inclusif, comme thème central. Pour les ateliers pratiques, je voudrais qu'on garde à l'esprit que le souhait d'avoir des bonnes pratiques, c'est de pouvoir avoir des choses qu'on implémente chez nous. C'est ça le souhait vraiment, d'avoir des bonnes pratiques. C'est vraiment ça le souhait des pays en développement. Je, je partage l'idée qu'on puisse insister toujours sur les spams, qu'on puisse insister sur les sets, 
mais également qu'on puisse mettre en exergue les points d'échange Internet qui sont des enjeux pour nous pour améliorer la qualité de l'Internet dans nos régions, mais aussi nos, nos données publiques. C'est vrai qu'on parle souvent de points pays, d'extensions de, 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 génériques et autres, mais l'enjeu, on constate aujourd'hui dans nos pays, on a du mal à gérer nos points pays. Des bonnes pratiques sur la gestion de nos domaines vont nous permettre vraiment d'améliorer la qualité de ces gestions-là. Et je voudrais finir en demandant s'il était possible d'avoir des expériences spécifiques sur les questions électorales, surtout en ligne, ça va être très bon pour nos pays en développement. Les questions d'élection posent vraiment de sérieux problèmes qui menacent l'équilibre de certains pays en, dans notre région. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. So thank you, thank you very much. Seems that uh, Carolina is not on, online anymore. Um, so uh, it has been very interesting and enriching uh, discussion. I, uh, we have, I think we, we have outlined more or less direction in which uh, we would uh, uh, think, and uh, our host country certainly got a num number of ideas. Uh, how to uh, shape shape the meeting um, for the for the homework I would like to ask a few things first and foremost please read the um, documents that Chengetai send out to the mag list especially uh, new mag members because uh, we will be talking tomorrow on uh, more technical issues that require prior knowledge uh, on some, some of those, specifically on evaluation uh, methodology of the workshops uh, and, um, and so on. So there, therefore, please read, read them. Uh, secondly, I would like to ask, based on the conversation we had uh, this afternoon, please uh, s uh, share online on the mag list your ideas about uh, themes and sub-themes. Uh, what I heard uh, a majority that uh, though we need uh, we need to uh, encompass everything we need to be simple at the same time so uh, we have uh, experience of being very simple and and formulating in formulating sub themes in four words openness access security diversity uh, we have experience being more elaborate, but then we couldn't agree on, on uh, 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 four sub-teams. And then that stretches out, and again, four sub-teams were uh, defined because there were four days in, of, of the IGF, and that there was, there was a logic of that uh, division that each day would be devoted to one theme uh, without hampering debate on other themes uh, during the same day. So please uh, think once again and share your thoughts uh, in writing over uh, uh, this evening that tomorrow morning I, uh, I could try to summarize uh, and uh, make uh, some kind of proposal uh, that, uh, uh, that would be uh, for discussion uh, in, in the uh, morning part of the, of the session. Um, sec secondly, on the intercessional uh, I think that we have now two proposals on, on the table. One proposal is uh, to take this developmental uh, theme suggested by uh, ICC bases, uh, the policy, mm, policy mix uh, for next billion online, policy menus for next billion online, as the theme for intercessional work that would result uh, with a policy uh, 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 compilation that we would present uh, to the IGF uh, as a tangible outcome. That team also could be, could be, if uh, agreed by uh, national and regional IGFs, addressed uh, during those meetings, and contributions could be, uh, could become integral part of that document. So that is about the, the possible theme for intercessional work. On top of it, uh, we would work on best practice uh, compilations, which then would be presented uh, at the IGF meeting in Brazil uh, as a mature documents 
and again would be uh, presented as a tangible output uh, from from the uh, uh, from the document uh, from from the meeting we cannot go beyond five uh, because of practical sort of reasons capacity reasons so what I heard that maybe some of the five themes that have been worked on uh, for Istanbul IGF we could park and would present them as accomplished for the moment we heard that that two of them uh, may go further in the second volume or second iteration because they are very complex and there is uh, many issues that could be developed further uh, but again we need to bring also some new issues on the table today we heard uh, gender and and internet proposed IXPs uh, proposed managing uh, uh, managing identity online ethical data handling those were proposals uh, during the discussion maybe there are some more please share your views uh, in, a, in a sort of bullet point format what these best practice themes could be or issues could be and tomorrow I would try to summarize and make, make a, a suggestion uh, for for the group so if that is agreeable and I see no objections uh, then uh, we could we could we could finish for, the, for tomorrow also I Fiona please Yes, thank you very much, Janice. So no objections to what you've proposed, but just a, a suggestion to facilitate tomorrow's conversation, if now is the right time to make that suggestion. Yes, please. So on, on the agenda for tomorrow afternoon, item six is the um, overall preparatory calendar of meetings and milestones for IGF. It might be useful for the conversation for there to be a, a draft circulated of what those milestones tend to have historically been. So we're not starting fresh for many people that we actually understand, like we have to finish the evaluation criteria, we have to do the call for workshops, we have to do the evaluation. So people have an understanding of what exactly is before us next year. It might help facilitate the discussion and maybe even suggested dates if, you, if the secretary would like to offer those. Thank you. So I, I see that, that that is return uh, return the ball to the chair, right? I asked uh, you do the homework and you asked me to do the homework. Okay, I'm taking that. So I will do that. So thank you for suggestion. I would like to thank our interpreters uh, who helped us enormously today uh, understand each other much better, especially for extra work translating Spanish. Uh, uh, of conversation and thank you very much uh, we uh, will resume our meeting tomorrow at 10 uh, a.m. sharp in this very room uh, enjoy your evening in uh, Geneva thank you <laughs>